I'm Circuit Judge Anita Harold Ashley, and I'm proud to sponsor this ad supporting the Roan County Raiders. I've spent a lot of time participating in sporting events in my lifetime as a player, a Raider parent, and a fan. I've observed there are lots of ways people enjoy the games. It might be like my dad, who quietly studied the game to catch stats, or my dear mom, who gained a reputation for yelling at the refs. Or the fan may be there primarily to enjoy the band or the cheerleaders. But it's clear, we're all rooting for the Raiders. Let's win. Paid for by the Committee to Re-Elect Judge Anita Harold Ashley, Kate J. Burbank, Treasurer. When it comes to providing facility solutions and maintenance support to the industrial and railroad industries as well as port and inland terminals and Department of Defense operations, nobody does it better than Air Production and Service Inc. At APS, our team is dedicated to providing high quality service, parts, and equipment for your air production systems. Whether you are in need of air compressor products or services, you can turn to our team with confidence. We have offices located in Jacksonville, Florida, Corbin, Kentucky, Pembroke, North Carolina, and Spencer, West Virginia. To expand our reach and make it easier for you to get the help you need with minimal weight or frustration. Contact us today to learn more about the different types of services and products we offer. Contact your local APS representatives, Mike and Michelle Spears in Spencer, West Virginia at 304-927-2550. Proud supporter of all Roan County Athletics. This is XYZ Insurance. How can I help? I have a question about my home policy. Okay, question about phone policy. <sighs> Home policy. Okay, gnome policy. H-O-M-E, home. Technology is great, but sometimes it's better to talk with a real person. With Erie Insurance, you have a caring, independent agent who's with you from beginning to end. We don't have any H-O-M-E's on record. Your Erie agent in Spencer is Ashley Insurance. Get a quote today at ashleyinsures.com. Go to erieinsurance.com for company licensure and product details. This is Jennifer Board Nichols at Board de Pew Realty. So many things have changed around us lately, and we are all concerned about what the future holds. During these uncertain times, we want you to know that one thing will not change, and that's the service and the professionalism we will offer you at Board de Pew Realty. My grandmother started this company over 64 years ago, and one thing hasn't changed. If you use Board de Pew Realty to buy or sell your home, you are guaranteed to receive service that is guided by principles like honesty and wisdom and a conscience. Owning a home is the American dream, and that hasn't changed. So let Board de Pew Realty show you the way to that dream. Even if the times are changing, principles and service shouldn't. So let Board de Pew Realty show you that some things remain the same. Our house is a very, very, very fine house. This message comes to you courtesy of Brandon Dental Associates, conveniently located on Hospital Drive in Spencer, West Virginia. Benjamin Franklin is credited with saying an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so it is with daily and regular professional preventive dental care. Brushing twice a day and flossing once a day combined with regular professional preventive care at least twice a year can help provide a lifetime of dental health. Call Brandon Dental at 304-927-2775 for your family's dental care. That's Brandon Dental Associates at 304-927-2775. Calhoun Banks is your hometown bank. We've been serving Calhoun and the surrounding areas for over 120 years. We offer many financial and banking services, including commercial, online and mobile banking, mobile wallet, our annual deals on wheels loan sale, home and construction loans, and we specialize in land-only loans. With offices in Grantsville, Arnoldsburg, Elizabeth, and Glenville, we are ready to serve the needs of all of our communities. Stop in and see us at one of our four locations today. Visit our website at CalhounBanks.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CalhounBanksWV. Lobby hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Friday lobby hours are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturdays, our drive through is open 8.30 a.m. to noon. Equal Opportunity Lender, member FDIC. Carpenter's General Store in Spencer has been saving you money and giving you the best selection in Rome County since 1996. We have an amazing selection of domestic, import, and craft beers, ciders, and wines at the absolute lowest prices anywhere. And if we don't have it, we'll get it for you. 
We have a sporting goods section with all the right fishing gear, locally crafted lures, and live bait. And we also carry a great selection of firearms and ammunition. And once again, if we don't have it, we'll get it for you with the lowest prices guaranteed. We're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come see us at 746 Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. It's a convenience store with a whole lot more. Stop by Spencer Cash Saver to check out our fresh produce, quality meats, and our new grab-and-go deli sliced meats and cheeses. New two-week ads start every other Thursday with the best prices for your budget. Save money and shop local at Spencer Cash Saver. Stop by D&D Motors for great deals on used cars. We have an incredibly diverse and continuously growing inventory to choose from with many makes and models at price points that anyone can afford. D&D Service Department also offers oil changes, tire rotations, and other maintenance on your new purchase. Call D&D for your next service appointment. D&D Motors, located at 276 East Main Street in Spencer. Stop in and see Dan or Donna for your super deal today. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon, and closed on Sunday. D&D Motors, call 304-519-2157. Since 2019, DW Excavating has been serving Roan and surrounding counties. We offer services including, but not limited to, repairing driveways, construction site preparation, drainage solutions, property brush clearing, farm road construction, culvert repair and installation, and utility line installation and repair. We provide free estimates. Check out our Facebook page or contact us at 304-532-2968 for more more information. DW Excavating, taking pride in our work and in our community. DW Excavating is a proud supporter of Auburn County High School Athletics. Go Raiders! This is Lady Raider volleyball and softball player Mahaley Nicholson for Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Since 2016, ECI has provided West Virginia with top-notch service for both home and commercial needs. We pride ourselves on working closely with our clients to ensure that projects are completed in a timely manner, that customer expectations are met, or in many cases exceeded. Regardless of the job size, we have solutions for everyone. We specialize in septic systems, brush removal, dirt work, asbestos removal, and more. Check us out on the web at www.ecywv.net or contact us for a quote at 304-532-7653. Fax number 304-532-7653. Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Ed Nicholson, owner, West Virginia Contractors License 055775. This is Ashton Rhodes, Chronic Care Manager at Roan County Family Healthcare. Are you struggling to control your blood pressure, lower your A1C, or manage other chronic health conditions? Do you ever feel overwhelmed or unsure after an office visit and need some extra help? If that's you, we can help. Roan County Family Healthcare is now providing chronic care management services for qualifying patients. By enrolling in our services, you will receive one-on-one -on -one consultations, an individualized comprehensive care plan, education, monthly check-ins, and more. All of this will allow you access to your care team easily for questions, concerns, or follow-up. So are you ready to team up and find a healthier version of you? Give me a call at 304-927-8139. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Let me help you manage your chronic conditions. Rome County Family Healthcare, healthcare for the entire family. Groves Auto Service in beautiful downtown Arnoldsburg, West Virginia is a full service auto center providing you with AC, front end and four wheel alignment, tires, exhaust systems to basic oil changes and state inspections and full electrical diagnostic service. Our highly trained technicians with over 40 years of experience between them, Groves Auto Service in Arnoldsburg, West Virginia, 304 655-6765 and be sure to check out our Facebook page. Hi folks, here at Hardman's we are a full service building material and hardware store. We have it all from nuts and bolts to plumbing, electrical, best look paint, lumber, drywall, furniture, appliances, flooring, and kitchen and bath. Our best look paint is a sure win to brighten up your interior walls or spruce up your exterior. 
We don't just sell the products, but we deliver and install many of them as well. All of our installers are trained and certified. On top of all that, we know a little something about customer service. We'll greet you with a smile and have the knowledge to help you get the job done right. Stop in and let's tackle your next project together. Hardman's, our family serving yours since 1907. There is nothing quite like mowing season in the Mountain State. And if you love keeping your property looking pristine, stop in at Hilder Supply on Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer, West Virginia. We supply everything you need to make your yard look its best. Husqvarna riding mowers are in stock, including model number TS242XD for $36.99 and model TS142L for only $25.99. We also have plenty of Husqvarna 455 Rancher chainsaws on sale for 15% off while supplies last. Builder Supply also has an in-house mechanic for all of your Husqvarna and Shindawa equipment needs. Need a tune-up? We have your man. Visit us on the web at hildresupply.com, check out our Facebook page at Hildreth Oil Field Supply, or stop by and see us at the store located on Route 33 in Spencer. Hildreth Supply, a hometown store with hometown ownership and proud supporter of all Roan County athletes. Intelligent Network Securities is a hub zone, service disabled, veteran owned small business located in central West Virginia. INS provides full scope, enterprise level digital security and forensic services. We specialize in state and nation level cybersecurity intelligence, but we feel compelled as a company to offer our commercial consumers both proactive and reactive defense strategies as well. With 15 plus years experience in the field, providing support to commercial as well as nation and state level entities, INS can provide insight to protecting your assets with our use and knowledge of bleeding edge technologies. Check us out on the web at intelligent-network-security.com or call us at 304-566-9111. Brian Cottrell, President. When you find yourself faced with a legal issue, the steps you take next can literally impact the rest of your life. Hiring the right attorney is one of the most important decisions you'll make. At Joel Baker Law Office, we understand the importance of providing prompt, competent, and honest legal representation. Call or text our office today to schedule a consultation, 304-500-9238. As someone who played high school sports, I was able to learn the importance of hard work and being dedicated to your job. And these lessons are why it is important that we support high school athletes. I have continued to apply these lessons to my career as a prosecuting attorney for the last 15 years. And they are the same lessons, hard work and dedication, that I will use every day as a circuit judge. In 2024, vote Josh Downey for circuit judge in the Vision 3. Paid for by the committee to elect Josh Downey, Aaron M. Nichols, treasurer. Hey, are you serious? I like a good laugh. I beg you do too. Which is why I say, if all those insurance companies want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads, go right ahead. As long as it's not my money that's paying for it. Here's how you get seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance. Go to Erie Insurance. With Erie, a great price is just a start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products like Erie Rate Lock. You hear that? Rate Lock. Name says it all. For car insurance, it can't be beat. But hey, don't just take it from me. See for yourself why more than 90% of Erie customers stay with them year after year after year. Seriously. Your Erie Insurance Agent in Spencer is the Kirby Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 927-2544. That's 927-2544. Or visit kirbyinsurance.com. Hungry? There's only one place to go to satisfy a hunger that big any time of the day or night. McDonald's in Spencer. Choose from the famous Big Mac, quarter pounder with cheese, add fries and sweet tea, and you've got a meal that can't be beat. Start your day off right with the best breakfast in town. McDonald's in Spencer. Egg McMuffin, sausage egg and cheese biscuit, hot cakes, sausage burrito, add a cup of premium coffee and a hash brown. Great prices every day. McDonald's in Spencer. I'm loving it, and so will you. McIntosh Hardware Furniture and Appliances has been servicing Spencer and the surrounding area for over 50 years. McIntosh carries the finest selection of products to bring you the best value for your purchases. 
We are a full line furniture, appliance, bedding, and hardware retailer. We proudly supply Amana, Frigidaire, Vaughn, Brome, Lazy Boy, Whirlpool, Brown, and Maytag products. Shop local and support local businesses who support local athletes. We offer what the big stores won't, sales, service, delivery, installation, and removal. Call 304-927-2700. Visit us on the web at macintosh.goretailer.com. Check out our Facebook page at Macintosh Hardware Furniture and Appliances or stop by and see us at 204 Market Street in downtown Spencer. Let Mini Hamilton Health System be your choice when you or your family member has had a major illness or injury and needs extended rehabilitation and or therapy. Our swing bed program makes it possible to recover closer to your home. Mini Hamilton Health System, better health care, better living. Mini Hamilton Health System, be our partner in You've changed thousands of diapers, cut off hundreds of crusts, played hours of peekaboo and duck duck goose because you'd do anything for your kids. That's why it's so important to protect them with life insurance from State Farm. State Farm agent Norman L. Daniels will help make it easy and affordable to help you protect your family no matter what the future holds. Because the people you'd do anything for, life insurance could mean everything. Call State Farm agent Norman L. Daniels and Spencer at 304-927-5680 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Roan County Raider football is on the air. Stay tuned for all the exciting play-by-play -play action coming up next. Roan County High School football is brought to you by these supporting sponsors. Penna's Barbershop, Roan General Hospital, McIntosh Hardware, Furniture and Appliance, Jack Garrett Ford, Ashley Insurance, Joel Baker Law, PLLC, APS Air Production and Service Inc., Old Fences Realty, Stats Pharmacy, Anita Harold Ashley for Circuit Judge, Phoenix Nutrition, Honest Fred's Flooring, D&D Motors, Hilter Supply, Family Health Care, Groves Auto, Ford DePew Realty, Norman Al Daniel, State Farm Agent, Hardman Supply, Josh Downey for Circuit Judge, ECI Environmental Compliance, Inc., Carpenter's General Store, Mini Hamilton Health System, Boca Valley Bank, Spencer McDonald's, INS, Intelligent Network Security, Rich Top Rentals, Spencer Cash Saver, Brandon Dental, DW Excavating LLC, Spencer Pizza Hut, Kirby Insurance, Philip Deaver, Ferrone County Sheriff, Calhoun Banks, and the Player of the Game Award sponsored by Willard C. Starcher Auto Parts. And now we take you to the press box. Here's your Raider broadcast crew, Andrew Miller, John Penna, and Matt White. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number two of high school football across the great state of West Virginia. As we move into the month of September and into the second week of the season, getting off on the right foot with a victory is always preferred in the first couple of games of the season. Starting 2-0 in a 10-game season sets teams up with early opportunities to get a leg up on the others in their respective class. Although 0-2 or even 1-1 isn't a death sentence by any means, 2-0 in the first two games provides early excitement, momentum, and confidence. And in high school football, confidence and momentum can go a long way. It may not be common knowledge to most, but the Roan County Raiders have traditionally not gotten off on the right foot. In fact, in the previous 30 seasons of Raider football, only eight teams have tasted victory in Game 1 of the season. However, of those eight teams, seven went on to play in the Class AA playoffs, including the historic 2022 Raiders, who looked solid in a victory over St. Mary's. Now again in 2023, the Raiders have led off the year with a win, this time with a dominant second half over Shady Spring, defeating the Tigers 35-20. We can only hope that history will repeat itself. For the Raiders to continue marching, however, will require them to stay humble and refocus their efforts on Class AAA Lincoln County. The two teams have a brief but violent history with each other, and although the Raiders won the first three in the series, they have won just twice more since in 2019 and last season. But the Raider program seems to be carrying itself with a different level of confidence these days. The Raiders wasted no time last year on the Panthers, shutting them down and shutting them out on the Panthers' home field. The Panthers would love nothing more than to scratch out a road win tonight after taking a beating at the hands of Princeton last week. The Raiders had better be prepared for another physical war as it is each year between these two programs. So we turn our attention to tonight. 
2023 and a veteran Roan County team taking the field at County Stadium for the first time with a load of talent, a load of expectations, and plenty of motivation. If it is to be 2-0 for the Raiders, it will come against a big, physical, and angry Panther team. Now, as we approach 7.30 kickoff, and as the eyes of the fans in attendance focus on the field, the Raiders must focus their minds on the job at hand, and that job is to beat Lincoln County. Roan County, say it with me. It's time to kick the tires and light the bonfires. It's time for Raider football. Live from beautiful County Stadium on the campus of Roan County High School, we welcome you to WVRC 104.7 FM's live coverage of your Roan County Raiders. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to WVRC 104.7 FM's live coverage of Roan County High School football action. We welcome you from the friendly confines of the press box here at County Stadium overlooking this beautiful turf field in year number two of his existence. Andrew Miller alongside the rest of the crew here, John Penna, Matt White, Katie White, and Joe McDonald with us here tonight for all of the action. Well, John, we'll bring you in immediately with Roan County coming in at 1-0 and on the season. Obviously a very solid second half in the first game victory over Shady Spring. They've got to look to maybe capitalize on that second half, forget about that first half, some of those mistakes that they were able to make it through. Yeah, although they had some mistakes, they really just kind of settled themselves down throughout that second half. Had some great drives um, that took took a lot of time off the clock, and they were able to punch it in and, and score some points to kind of put that thing out of reach. Um, got a little tough there in the second quarter, but uh, overall, I think it was a great game for the uh, for the youth of of our team to kind of be put in a situation like that and see what our offense could figure out and then see what our defense could do down the stretch. Obviously, a couple of things that really stood out to me, I'm sure you as well, the offensive line play in that specific drive in the third quarter after the goal line stop with the fumble. They went on that march, long plays, long drive, and those guys stepped up in the biggest time. Yeah, and that's something that I didn't talk a whole lot about last week because, like I said, it's kind of been old hat with the O-line over the last couple of years, but Putting new, three new guys in, into the system, um, you, they, you didn't have to say much about them. Uh, and I went back and watched some film and, and was very impressed by what they were able to do, not only on the offensive line, but our lead blocking out of the backfield with our running backs as well. You know, on the other side of that thing, I think overcoming some adversity, not only, John, with the penalties in the first half, the turnovers in the first half, they did a much better job. They didn't put it on the ground in the second half. They did have some penalties in bunches, but I think overcoming that, and also, obviously, the big elephant in the room, John, overcoming the loss of Shea Harper. I think it was good for those young guys to be put under the fire and produce. Now they've had a week to actually work a little more on those positions. Yeah, you know, the, the coaches did a great job of, at halftime, you know, readjusting because when Shea went out, you know, I remember being on the sideline a couple years back when Shadrach broke his collarbone and Begler broke his collarbone, and it was just we were drawing plays up there uh, in the sand, but – um, I, I really like how the, the coaching staff kind of put that heavy package together with Lane Watson as like the, the, the bigger running back. Um, and they switched things up with, with Lane's power running and then B. Rich's uh, just quick stuff off the edge. We, we would hit it a couple times up the middle and then hit those pitches to the outside. And Clay Walker, you can't say enough about how he did uh, on the blocking end, but ran very tough as well. Well, funny you should mention the two broken collarbones they came against the team we're about to see yeah. here tonight down in Hamlin, West Virginia, the Lincoln County Panthers. Matt, I'll go back to last week quickly. Roan County last year, they were the run team of the state, 300-plus every single game. We weren't sure how it would work. Well, guess what? It worked very well last week with the run game. Yeah, it sure did. Uh, Roan County able to put 292 yards of offense on the ground alone, but – 72 through the air as well. Jacob Greathouse with seven passing attempts, which is absolutely mind-blowing because I think he only threw 10 the entire season last year. So a really revamped offense, but a lot of the same things. You've just got to be able to throw a couple little wrinkles in there uh, and, and use your personnel uh, to your advantage. Well, John, we've watched some film here this week on this Lincoln County Panther team offensively. The thing that I noticed in the first, or the second scrimmage, if you will, the first game was very tough to get much out of. Princeton just absolutely yeah. dominant in that one. But it looked to me like even with that Princeton team, that Lincoln County wants to line up the new quarterback, Lucas Joheem, in the shotgun, and they want to get him out of the pocket and dunk and dink it down the field to the outside. Yeah, they like they like some crossing routes. They'd like to use their tight end uh, quite a bit, and then that sniffer back 
to come out and just kind of look for, for, you know, five and outs, ten and outs, something to the flat. Um, and and that seems to be w- what they like to do. They, they run the ball okay. I think that their offensive line is probably going to need some work throughout. They, they just don't seem to be clicking. But, again, we, we're talking about Princeton, a, a very good team in, in the AAA ranks. Um, so, other you know, other than that, defensively, they're very physical. They, yes. they like to bring guys from all over the place, and uh, – they they just play a, a tough a tough brand of football defensively. Well, you mentioned their offensive line. Yeah. A lot of switch up in yeah. these in in the scrimmage game. There were four different guys playing that didn't even see the field against Princeton. So in this game, they're replacing the right guard and the right tackle from what they had last week against Princeton. So uh, and a couple of sophomores coming in in place. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, moving parts uh, early on in the season trying to figure out that offensive line for the Panthers. Well, that could go one of two ways then. You say, well, this position in the first game of the season is still open at this point, so if you want it, you better take it and you better earn it. So maybe there's some hungry sophomores out there for the Panthers looking to make a name for themselves. Defensively, again, they will pin their ears back. They're going to come at you outside, up the middle. They're going to blitz Roan County. Assignment football, you got to pick up those two-on-ones if you can. You need help up front with that young line. And, of course, the lead blockers need to just do what they did last week and just continue to punish those outside defenders. Yeah, it's it's going to come down to a lot of reads for the O-line guys. They're going to have to have their heads up. They're going to have to communicate quite a bit because, you know, like like you talked about it, we're, they're going to be blitzed from the inside, outside. There may be some stunts on the defensive front as well. So I, I, I think overall Roan County is going to come out here and, and play a pretty tough uh, football team, but I think Roan County has got what it takes here tonight. Well, speaking of what it takes, we've spoken about what Lincoln County might bring to the table on Roan County side of things. With Shea Harper out, you had another week for the guys in the backfield to switch it up like – uh, you got a little more Lane Watson flavor there in the second half. You got a little Sawyer Hunt who ran the ball hard. They still have a lot of weapons offensively, and I think, as Matt mentioned, it doesn't take 30 passes, but you give it, you give Jacob Greathouse five or six extra passes on the edge where he's making good decisions. It really makes it tough on those linebackers who want to come at you. You got to respect the throwing and the running of Jacob Greathouse. Yeah, you do. You have to. Uh, it's it's like what we did. We we kind of lulled people to sleep with with the run, and then we hit them with a with a nice crossing route to to Lane Watson, uh, and then Lane balls in his hands. Uh, you know, uh, good things are going to happen at, at any point if you're if he's running the ball, if he's going to catch it. Um, we, we saw him catch a couple over across the middle last week and just truck a couple guys and uh, and get good you know good position. Clay Walker caught a nice pass out of the backfield. But that's what happens when the run game is so good. It opens up things. And Jacob Greathouse has been tremendous at finding guys, you know, uh, open and, and making those reads. So um, it, it's, it's just got to be on the offensive line once again. Give them enough time, and he, he's going to find the open receiver. Well, defensively for Rome County, if you go back to last week, obviously there were some breakdowns in the passing defensive game for Rome County. Of course, when Shea Harper goes out, that's a big loss for you, and they threw four wide, five wide a good bit. You're going to see some passing here from Lincoln County, but I think in the second half last week, getting pressure up the middle on green changed the offense for the Tigers, so is that something that Roan County can do here tonight? Well, yeah, you know, last week Green liked to sit in the pocket, so the pressure up the middle was making him step away or try to roll out. Now, tonight you're going to see the quarterback roll to those sides, so you're going to have to have more contain on the defensive end, uh, and, and you're going to have to be really sound on your outside linebackers covering flats. That doesn't mean that we can't blitz you know, the, the, the middle, but this offense being a spread, it, it's a lot different than what Shady Springs tried to do last week. He wanted to stay in the pocket, hit the seam routes, all those kind of things. Tonight, these guys are going to roll. They're going to they're, they're going to look to dink and dunk coming from you know uh, tight ends and and try to get the ball to the flat and let the receivers do a lot of the work. Last week, quarterback was trying to get the ball downfield. Let's quickly mention that third cog of the the tripod of football. That's special teams. Not just the fact that we're going to mention Coben Cottrell's leg right now, but I think in the return game kicking. Well, last week already nearly a uh, kickoff return for a touchdown to start the season for Shea Harper. You still got B. Rich back there. You're going to have Lane Watson back there. You've got talented guys in the return game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and and anytime that, that those guys uh, get the ball in their hands, they, they can take it to the house. So um, I was impressed, especially with how they set that wall up for Shea, and, and he was able to, to break free and, and get down to the goal line. Um, 
but yeah, be be sound uh, on your kickoff, be sound on your kick return, and uh, let Coben Cottrell get a hold of one because he's going to put it back into the end zone. It is just a few moments away here from the opening kick of the opening home game of the season. Roan Kenny will be here for the next four ball games, so we're going to get real comfortable at home. It's Roan County and Lincoln County getting set to take place break to take for our sponsors. When we come back, more pregame coverage. We'll talk with Coach Burdett in the Coach's Corner after these messages. Did you know that now is the perfect time to list your piece of property? The weather is peachy, the inviting summer foliage has bloomed, and buyers are lining up to purchase your land. I'm Jordan Spears with Old Fences Realty, and I am dedicated to making the selling process a breeze for my clients. Keep your summer relaxing and allow me to use our worldwide extensive advertising to market and sell your home. Don't wade through the housing market alone. Call me, Jordan Spears, today for a free, without obligation, pre-listing consultation. Broker David and M. Greenlee. Want to look good and feel good? Then stop by and see John Penna at Penna's Barbershop in Spencer on Main Street. Want a guaranteed spot? You can set up an appointment, but if time is not an option, walk-ins are always welcome. Traditional haircuts, no problem. Tapers, high and tight, flat tops, and beard trims. Or if you're looking for something new, he can do that too. Custom designs, burst fades, and mullets. That's right, West Virginia Waterfall. Keeping you styling and profiling. Penis Barbershop has been a proud supporter of Roan County and Raider Athletics since 2009. Penis Barbershop on Main Street and Spencer. Stop in, call, or text at 304-531-4218. Hello, my name is Philip Deaver. I am running for Roan County Sheriff in 2024. I have been and will continue working to regain the community's respect, trust, and faith. Your vote in May of 2024 would be greatly appreciated. Paid for by the candidate. Well, we welcome you back to County State. Beautiful night weather-wise. The sun is going down behind the hills here, and it's going to be perfect weather for the second game of the season. Speaking of the second game of the season, we've had a chance to talk with Coach Paul Burdett beforehand, and this is what he had to say. All right, welcome back, folks. Standing here in our familiar position, back at home at County Stadium in the end zone, looking over this just tremendous facility. Coach, we go back to last week real quick. A tough first half. There were mistakes made, and you talked about how you overcome mistakes, how you get to the next play quickly. The second half really proved to me that this young group knows how to do that. Yeah, they did a really good job, Drew. I mean, they, their backs were kind of against the wall with mistakes, and, and they lost Shea, and, and we had to make a lot of uh, – a lot of moves at halftime to, to make things work for us there in the second half. And I, I kind of challenged them, really. I told them, that, you know, a team, true test of the team is how they how they came back and acted in the face of adversity. And, uh, man, I thought they played really well in the second half, and, and we got to continue to do that type of stuff moving forward. Well, you know, when you get to last year, you think about how – we beat on teams pretty badly throughout the year. You, sh you faced a little adversity early on. Can that be a good thing for this group? Nah, I think it's got to be good. Uh, you know, I, I told them early that we couldn't ride last year's coattails. You know, it's a new year. Last year doesn't matter anymore. We're proud of what happened, but it's over. Uh, it's about this is their story. This is about them and what they're going to do. So um, I, I was proud of the way they stepped up and, and did it last week. But, we got again, we got to continue to do that week in, week out. You know, it is sometimes easy for a team to look at a first game against an opponent. You see that score on the board, 49 to nothing. But these guys need to know that Princeton is a very good athletic team, and they did what they needed to do. This is still a Lincoln County team that is big, that is physical, and they're going to fight us from start to finish. So how do your guys come into this game as far as mentality is concerned? Well, good, I think. Uh, you just never know. You know, they're kids, and – uh, we've preached to them all week, you know, don't be comfortable, understand that they're, they, they've got weapons they can beat us with, and, and they're going to be big and they're going to be physical. You know that for sure. And uh, we, we, we've, done a, we've tried to do a good job of, of keeping that fresh in their brains, and, and they've, they've prepared well, so we'll see what happens here at 730. I said during the uh, intro that this has become kind of a, a testy little early in the history series between the two five to four you guys have the lead with one more win than they do you've won the last uh you won one, two of the last three but this is becoming a rivalry if you want to call that out of double and triple a it's one of those games you put on the schedule in 2014 not really knowing 
and the way these two teams have fought each other, it's become t very intense. Yeah, it really is, and, and has been over the years. Each and every year, I mean, I, every year it's it's physical, and you can bank on it. It's going to be physical, um, you know. But it, 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 you got to play 48 minutes of football and be ready for what's in front of you each and every Friday night. Obviously, without Shea Harper last week in the uh, second half, you had to adjust on the fly. You had a week now to kind of get guys in place, feel a little more confident, I assume, coming into this one. Yeah, I mean, we way better than we did last week in the second half. I mean, <laughs> that was, you know, just throw it in and hope it worked, and it did. Uh, but those guys have been in the game before. They've been in the fire, so it wasn't like I, I was throwing somebody in, especially on the offensive side, was brand new. Now, defensively, we got a few fresh faces, but uh, – It'll be all right. Those guys worked hard, and, and, and I feel like, again, I feel like they prepared well this week. So all they can do is go out and, and see what happens when the game's being played. Well, obviously, when we mention injuries at the end of these conversations, we know that Shea is out. Obviously, that's that's a big thing. But uh, anybody else as far as varsity is concerned? Well, Varsity-wise, we're good. You know, still still nursing a couple young guys back to health, and, and hopefully they can get back soon and, and, and be able to contribute to what we're wanting to do. But... Uh, you know, losing Shea is a big deal, and and we all hate it. I mean, we hate it for Shea more than anything. But uh, you know, we we we're young in the season, and we got to keep working, keep going here. So it's just go out here, play for Shea, and play for us, and let's see what happens. Well, it certainly isn't the August heat tonight. It's actually very nice. Going to be chilly night, almost like fall football, Coach. We wish you the best of luck here in the first home game of the season. Go out there and take care of business. Thanks, Drew. We appreciate it. Head Coach Paul Burnett, stick around, folks. More pregame coverage after these messages. And we bring it right back here. As it looks like we're going to get started just a little bit early, fellas. Roan County already out on the field. Lincoln County out on the field. The coin toss has taken place. Let's take a look quickly at the lineups for both these teams. First off on offense for the Lincoln County Panthers. As Lincoln County Panther team put up 194 total yards of offense last week. Up front, a uh, six foot, 270 pound junior Josiah Stratton, six one, 250 pound senior Walker Atkins, 5'10", 215 pound sophomore Braylon Peters is the center. The two replacements on the right side, Cooper Montgomery, a 5'11", 240-pound sophomore, and Blake Lucas, 6'2", 260-pound sophomore at right tackle. Out on the wings, you've got Steven Adkins, a 5'10", 170-pound senior, and 5'10", 172-pound senior Logan Spinagle. In the backfield, 5'10", 182-pound senior Austin Atkins, and the go-to guy on offense, 5'10", 170-pound junior Drew Banks. He contributed 99 of that 194 yards of offense. And running the show, 6'1", 180-pound junior Lucas Joheim. Along the front line defensively for Rome County, DN's Andy Jetton, the 5'11", 175-pound senior, and Coben Cottrell, the 6'2", 220-pound junior. D tackles at one side, Noah Jets. 6'2", 270, junior, and the big man on the other side, the senior, Jacob Bunner, 6'2", 285 pounds. Outside backers, Sawyer Hunt, a 6'1", 165-pound senior. And on the other side, we've moved some people around. We're not exactly sure who's going to be on that outside. On the other side, I'm guessing it may end up being the freshman, Colton Starcher. We're not really sure exactly who's going to be covering now in place of uh, of Shea Harper. We do know the other two. One of them is going to be the bowling ball and stuff. What would you call him, John? The skid steer, the baby. The skid steer <laughs> is what we're going to start calling. Number 25, Clay Walker, 5'9", 195, junior. And he has been very, very good so far this year for the Raiders. In the defensive backfield at the safety position, Brandon Richardson might as well be a linebacker and an end as well because he is fast. 5'7", 160 pound senior. Corners, Jacob Greathouse, a 5'9", 145 pound sophomore. Brody Proctor, 5'8", 150 pound freshman. Uh, the Lincoln County defense goes like this, 4'3", up front. 5'11", 210 pound sophomore David Stevens, 6'1", 250 pound senior Walker Atkins in the middle, 6'2", 270 pound junior Josiah Stratton, and the end 6'2", 185 pound junior Jack Tidd, also the tight end. In the uh, linebacking core, 6'1", 190 pound sophomore Alex Banks, in the middle, 5'10", 172 pound senior Logan Spinagle. And on the other outside, 5'10", 182 pound senior Austin Atkins. The corners, 5'10", 170 pound senior Steven Atkins. 5'9", 180 pound junior Jordan Gregory on the other corner. 
in the safety backfield, 5'10", 170-pound junior Drew Banks, and the 6'1", 180-pound junior Lucas Joheen. Well, lest I forget on the defensive uh, linebacking core, Lane Watson. That yeah. was the one I didn't have listed there. Lane Watson, the 6'2", 210-pound junior at the inside backer position. Just an absolute animal last week. Let's hope he can continue that this week. On the offense for Roan County along the front line, left side is anchored by Noah Jett, the 6'2", 270-pound junior DT or offensive tackle. Jacob Bunner, the 6'2", 285 senior as well. On the left side, your center is the sophomore, Colton Elliott. 5'9", 230-pound sophomore. Along the right side, you've got Tyson Freeland, 6'2", 255 junior. And uh, Hogan Greathouse, the 5'10", 235-pound sophomore. Now, we're going to have Coben Cottrell and Lane Watson both as an end here tonight because Lane will be in the backfield some as well. Coben, 6'2", 220 junior. And Lane, a 6'2", 210 junior for the Raiders. All on the outside, we've got Brandon Richardson. Well, no, Brandon's going to be in the in the backing position. I apologize. I'm rewriting this whole thing in my head, guys, as we look at it. Uh, so we're going to have Sawyer Hunt as one of the outside guys. Sawyer Hunt, the 6'1", 165 senior for Roan County. In the backfield, you've got the I'm going to call him the bowling ball until you get it through my head. He's the skid steer. You've got the lead blocker in Clay Walker, 5'9", 195, junior. The halfback, Brandon Richardson, coming off of that big 185-yard night, 5'7", 160-pound senior. And the quarterback is the sophomore, 5'9", 145, Jacob Greathouse. Well, they had us fooled, guys. It looked like we were going to start early, so we came back early. And now they're all just on the field sitting around. I'm not sure what happened with yeah. their normal time frame. Cody, uh, Coach Cody May had had stopped up here on his way up to the to the perch and said they wanted us out here at 10 after, and he's he was con he was confused about that. And we know Coach Burdett doesn't like to change anything up, so he's down there probably pulling some hair out. Yeah, I'm surprised he is still uh, vertical at the moment. Let's take a look at the coach coaching battle here tonight. Head coach Paul Burdett, 13th season. At the helm for Roan County, 67 and 56, six playoff appearances, and a couple back-to-back -back quarterfinal in Class AA playoff appearances for Lincoln County. They've gone through a lot of head coaches in the last 20 years, but Brad Likens now in his fourth season, just nine and 20 on the year. Roan County leads the overall series five to four. Now the officials now moving into place. Finally. So let you, they let you guys get everything out. Hey, and if anybody gets bored and wants to run down to the Route 33 Steakhouse. Absolutely. Jorge was going to put the game on the TVs Absolutely. down there. Go check that place out. If you have not been to the Route 33 Steakhouse, you are missing out already. They just opened less than a month ago. Roan County in the all maroon uniforms tonight. Jerseys and pants. White Raider R on the side of the helmets with the white stripes, white numbers, and letters. All white for Lincoln County. They've got the navy blue hats with the powder blue LC on the side and navy blue numbers and letters. Rome County will take the opening kick. And kicking off will be Derek Atkins, the junior, back deep. Brandon Richardson, Lane Watson standing at the 15. This will sail from left to right across your dial. We welcome you. All of you listening and watching Rome County Raider football on WVRC 104.7 FM. Waiting on the clock to set. There we go. Officials should blow that whistle. Healthy home stands here for Roan County in this first game. Atkins approaches high, end over end kick. It'll be Watson and Richardson try to steal it from him with the 17. Lane takes it away out to the 32. Those two <laughs> wanted that one. Yeah, you got to call that right there. Mine, mine, mine. But Lane Watson uh, comes away with it. That thing was opening up pretty well. Closed up quickly, though, and uh, a nice tackle there. Uh, let's see, by number seven, Dunlap for Lincoln County. That stopped what could have been a very big return. First and ten as we begin this contest. Right to left on the far hash, the 32. Twin receivers far side, one to the near side. Shotgun for Jacob Greathouse. Running back to his left. That's Clay Walker. Greathouse still looking, still looking. 2-1 on the clock. They'll snap it just in time. Here's the end around. That's Richardson looking for room to run. Jumps over a defender at the 30. He won't get back to the line of scrimmage. That did not look, John, like the Raiders were, were where they needed to be. Yeah, it was a little quick on the handoff. Um, 
B. Rich is going to come across in motion. It, it was a little too uh, – he, he was there a little too quickly. And uh, it just – the timing on that play wasn't very well. Uh, Clay Walker did a good job of trying to get out front and block. But uh, just, uh, just a tough opening play. That one a loss of two. And it will be second and 12 at the 30 of Roan County. Cottrell split wide to the far side. Slot is Richardson. He'll come to the near side in motion. Snap back, rolling to the wide side. Flared it out. He's got the man, Greathouse, right into the gloves of Lane Watson. He'll pick up the two lost and about three or four more. Yeah, that time just a little, looked like a little bit of a, a just a flat-out route. You bring B. Rich across in motion, get some eyes looking that way, and then you come back across. Nice little pass. It's going to bring up a third down and six situation here. A gain of six on the pass and catch. Far side hash at the 36-yard line. Raiders with a third and long. Cottrell split wide, far side. Hunt to the near side. Now Richardson out in the slot to the near side. Great house into the shotgun once again. Snap back. Great house rolling to the near side. He's got pressure. Got to get rid of it, oh. young man. Throws it into the gloves of the opponent, and that is Austin Atkins with the interception. That was caused by Logan Spinagle, a dead-on blitz from the right side, and Greathouse couldn't flip the hips in time. Yeah, and that's what we were watching here on film. You saw a lot of pressure, and uh, Greathouse just tried to get rid of it as good as he could. But Johnny on the spot, Atkins there, and uh, good field position here for Lincoln County. You don't want to give these guys any momentum to start off with, so the defense and have to pin their ears back. Now the defense did well in their own territory once again last week a couple of times. This will start 30-yard line of Roan County. The turnover comes at 10-19 of the first possession. Three wide to the far side, one near. Motion man across to the near side. That's Drew Banks. Joheem throwing the slip screen out to the wide side. Caught. Great open field tackle after the gain of four. It went into the hands of Zachariah Miller. Yeah, that was a great tackle by Sawyer Hunt there, Drew. Saul's playing that other linebacker, that other linebacker role, so the flat's going to be his responsibility. They ran that little bubble screen and uh, a great take down there by the senior. A gain of four on the screen just outside of the Roan County 26-yard line. 9.45 and rolling. First offensive possession for Lincoln County. Roan County turned it over twice first half last week. Already gives one up here. Under center goes Joheim. He'll turn, hand it off. Outside looking for running room. Once again, that's Drew Banks. He'll maybe get a half yard. Flag is on the field, though. Yeah, Lane Watson came shooting in. And in that area, you're always going to look for holding. Let's see what the officials call here. The initial blocking on the left side of the line was pretty good, John. But yep. again, like a missile coming in. Was well, Lane Watson and John, you, sir, are correct. I've done this a couple times. Holding on the offense. That will negate the half yard gain. And that's one thing Roan County really struggled with last week was penalties. Good to see a couple of them early here on uh, Lincoln County. Yeah, I think last week at halftime, Matt, only one on Shady. I think that was right. So that will back the. Panthers up outside the 35 to the 37. Second down and long. Snap back. Here's the slip out top. What a catch by Banks, but what a recovery by Sawyer Hunt. He saw it. He read it. And, John, he got there fast. Yeah, that's his responsibility. The back going to come out of the backfield. You'll see here on the replay. Comes across in motion. Saw his eyes are going to follow this guy. Okay, he's going to bump down. Boom. As soon as that play happens, Take down for two. Nice tackle in the backfield, and Lincoln County moving backwards here. A loss of five more on the play defensively by senior Sawyer Hunt. It'll bring up third and 22. The yard to reach is the 20 of Roan County. The clock rolling, 840 here in the first. No score. Roan County and Lincoln County, three bunch to the far side. Joheim into the shotgun. Five-step drop, flushed out of the pocket, nowhere to set, and he is wrapped up in the backfield, and here comes the Cavalry. Yes, sir, Jacob Bunner. Looks like Andy Jett and Lane Watson, all three, have a meeting at the quarterback. It's probably going to be another holding 
Uh, you see Coach Peary down there shaking. Coburn was getting his, Co his jersey ripped off. Coburn was right there. Oh, yeah. Jetton was down here on this outside getting held. Coach Peary is waving that one off early. Knew it was on Lincoln County. That will bring up fourth down and 22 and a punting situation. So after the turnover, Roan County gets right back to business, forcing Lincoln County backwards. Yeah, weathered the storm there. Big penalty there uh, also on that drive for Lincoln. Didn't help them out any. Richardson, Watson back to the 15 just as they did in the opening. And it will be another Atkins low. End over end kick lands at the 25, skips forward to the 20 and down to the 16-yard line. But did someone touch it at the 20? I think they're going to call it dead at the 20. Well, so Roan County just gives up three plays and a punt, and they start this possession instead of the 32 at the 20. Well, yeah, you know, you're going to come out, you're changing your offense. Things didn't didn't go very crisp on that first possession, Drew. The, you got a penalty early, uh, the turnover. So now we'll see if Roan County goes back to the bread and butter. Second possession, 8.08 in the first quarter, no score. Roan County beginning from their own 20 between the hashes. They'll fully load the backfield with the heavy. R Brandon Richardson into the teeth of the defense. He'll get one and no more. I was wondering if we would see heavy early in the ball game, especially after that first possession that didn't work out. Last week, B. Rich was able to get uh, to the second level very quickly. Right now, Lincoln County's defense, though, they're playing downhill. They actually started the drive at the 21, I apologize. So a yard gain out to the 22. Second down and nine. Clock rolling in the first quarter. Seven minutes, 35 seconds, no score. Traditional, I uh, nope, that is still heavy. Richardson dots it. He's got Walker and Watson in front. This time it'll be the second man through. That's Clay Walker. Busts out to the 25. Give him three. Yeah, just that quick hitter. So you got two runs there, kind of up the middle. See the offensive lineman, Bunner, showing the coaches what's going on, wanting a little change up on the blocking scheme. Clock rolling, seven minutes and counting. Second possession for Roan County. Another third down and long on the first. It was a turnover on an interception. Sawyer Hunt splits out to the Roan County sideline. Great house under center, heavy package again. It'll be Richardson off tackle. Richardson locked up at the line of scrimmage. He'll get one and no more. The defense interior of Lincoln County pinning the ears back, and they are loading the box and bringing all of the linebackers. Yeah, they're showing some. Uh, they're showing some fire. Roan County will look to punt here. This is something that we only did about five times total last season, Drew. And let's just say it was not good last year. Coben Cottrell, he does have a leg. Stands at his own 12, back deep to receive. Can't see. Have to wait and see. Eight. Low snap, handled. That one on the low line drive. That's going to be Banks. That one gets across the 50, across the 45, rolls out at the 43. A very early flag, though. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a false start. <laughs> one of those gunners tried to take off a little early. Now defensive coach Matt Peary getting the explanation from the side judge. And now we will have our official explanation. Oh, they declined it. Okay. So the Panthers will take the ball at the spot it rolled out, which is officially their own 42-yard line. So the Raiders, yeah. Looking a lot like the first quarter and for first half last week so far. Some, well, a couple of penalty problems, but uh, a turnover and just looking a little not in, in sync just yet. Yeah, they're, they've, they're, they're working on a new, a new offense, so it's going to take a little bit to work the kinks out. 5.09 beginning the second drive for Lincoln County in the short shotgun is Joheem. He'll keep it himself to the far side. Got one defender trying to shake another, but three there. It started with Clay Walker, 
Lane Watson came in to help, and Brandon Richardson there to help finish. Yeah, Clay Walker, first guy there. B. Rich comes in, and then Lane says, let me get a little lick in there as well. Nice three-yard gain, though, for the quarterback. They, they went back to that same look where Sawyer made a nice tackle in the backfield, just that fake out, and the, just the quarterback, kind of what we call St. Louis. Gain of three out to the 45. Clock rolling, 5-20. And counting, second and seven. Twin receivers near side, wing to the near side. It'll be a handoff. Banks try to jump cut, and he slipped on the turf. He had nothing but uh, maroon in front of him anyway, and he will lose the yardage gained on first. It'll bring up third and ten. Yeah, the little jump cut there didn't work. Lost his footing. I think one of those linemen got pushed back into him and maybe kind of undercut by his own guy. Yeah. Credit a defense Rowe County's interior defense for getting a good push up front. Yeah. A defensive battle here in the first quarter between these two. Neither defense giving up much. Very stifling. 445 and rolling. No score on a third down and nine at the 43 of Lincoln County. Twins far side. Single receiver near side. They'll motion Atkins. He'll set at the wing. Here's a roll to the near side. Looking backside for the oh. screen. It is set up perfectly. They've got the first down with Banks. And he will roll out of bounds at the 45 of Roan County. That we could see from up here, John. And that's something we also noticed in the film, that they do that. They like to screen quite a bit. And, and when, you, when they kind of let guys go by, you got to slow yourself down. Lane Watson was breathing down his neck. And a nice little dump over pass. Be rich with the tackle. Call Banks out at the 46 of Roan County. Quick slip screen again. Oh, Roan County was there early. <laughs> and that was a great play by Brody Proctor, the freshman, but he could have been called for a holding there. Yeah, just a little little quick. But uh, I, like his, I like his aggression. I like him being there when the ball's delivered. Check here on the replay. Proctor's going to step up. Watch that bubble. Reads it well. Got there maybe just a smidge early. I, I'm not going to say it, Brody. It was all Drew. <laughs> Loss of a yard on the play. <laughs> Second down and 11 from the 47 of the Raiders. Receiver to both sides. Tight end to both sides. Banks moves to the left of the shotgun. Joheen calls the signal. There will be a handoff. Banks looking to bust it to the outside. And he will be dropped after a gain of maybe three yards. Good coverage by that linebacking core, including Lane Watson yet yeah. again. Lane on his third tackle here in the first quarter. 320 and rolling. It'll be third and eight just inside the Roan County 45 at the 44. They must reach the 36 of Roan County. No score. Raiders with a turnover and a punt on a three and out. Lincoln County a three and out the first, and then a third down pickup here in their second possession. Twins far side, one to the near side. The wing to the far side again. No motion, Miller to the near side. Rolling outs, looking down the field. Atkins just launches it. Sorry, Joheem launches it way down the field, and I think that was a just get rid of it. Yeah, great coverage down the field by uh, Chad Blosser, but... A decent job by their offensive line of not allowing a whole lot of pressure there as well. Game of field position at the moment being won by the Panthers. And they will show punt on a fourth and eight from Roan County Territory. Richardson and Watson go back deep. Once again, kicking will be Derek Atkins, the junior, standing at his own 43. High snap. Atkins handles it. Gets it away left-footed. And that will land at the 24-yard line, take a sideways bounce, and it is dropped right there. Well, that was a great athletic play by Atkins to catch that high snap. Yeah, could have got a little more squirrely. Now we're playing between the 40 and the 20 of Roan County right now. That's all we've done in the first part of the first quarter. We're down to 234 as the Raiders will start possession number three from their own 23. They move right to left, no score. Both defenses playing very well here in the first quarter. Ball spotted near hash. And the Raiders going to bunch it in once again. 
Three in the backfield. They're looking for some blocking up front now. Richardson over the 25 to the 26, maybe 26 and a half. Nice tough run there by B. Rich. He took some, uh, took some licks, but delivered some as well. That will start the clock once again. A very quick moving first period. We're at 215 and counting. No score yet. Home opener in 2023 for the Raiders. Give Richardson a good three, a short four on the carry. Second down, we'll call it seven from the 26 of Roan County. I formation. Watson across in motion to the wide side of the field. Pitch to the outside. B. Rich cuts it up. Spins at the 27. Flag comes in late, and that is not in a good place if you're a Raider fan. Uh, maybe a face mask. Maybe on that spin move? Maybe. Well, we can hope. Right now, the ball is spotted outside the 30 at the 30 and a half. So it would have been about a four-yard carry for Brandon Richardson. Raiders are moving back, though. Yeah, it must have been a hold then. And that is, nope, they're going to call a hold. Okay. <laughs> Refs are in game two as well. That was a holding on Roan County initially called. On the defense, I got a little excited for a second. Double holding. So from the spot of the foul, this is going to hurt. Back inside the 20 down to the 16 of Roan County. And that'll bring up second down and 16 for the Raiders. 135 on the clock. It's rolling. No score. And the Raiders have not played the cleanest offense here in the first couple of series. They'll spread it out. Twins to both sides. Richardson comes to the Roan County side in motion. Here's the snap. Flair pass out to B. Rich. Makes a move. Makes another move. Cuts it inside, cuts it outside, and the Raiders need to do a little better job of blocking, John. Yeah, on the Richardson outside. making moves, and there was just white jerseys coming. Yeah, on the outside, you've got to hold your blocks a little longer, especially with B. Rich back there. If he makes a couple moves and he gets a seam, he can take it to the house. So got to just clean that up a little bit. But like I said, this is going to be some new, new uh, uh, offense for the Raiders, so they're going to have to just grind through it. Lots of movement for Richardson for one yard. Third down and 15. 40 seconds, seconds left in the first. Three bunch to the near side. Great house, five-step drop. He's going to launch it one-on-one -on -one out to the far side. Coming back is Cottrell. Coven makes the grab at the 35-yard line. And that was so close. Great house held himself in the pocket until the very last second. He launched it high into the sky and said, hey, Coben, you're 6'2", buddy. Go get it. Yeah, he's just one-on-one -on -one out here on the outside. Coben goes, does a good job of getting past the sticks. Ball's floated up, goes up for the rebound, and then a touchdown saving tackle there by Joheem. Well, hopefully that will give the Raider offense a little bit of a spark. 20 seconds left on a first down and new life for the offense. First and 10 at their own 38. They'll split Cottrell over here to the Roan County side. Back split in the backfield. Richardson goes in motion behind the back. Scissors misdirection carry. Here goes Sawyer Hunt up the middle, 10 yards of a chunk, and that will move the sticks again, and that will be the final play of quarter number one. Not the greatest start, but Roan County getting a bit of momentum here at the final part of the first quarter. No score will come back. It'll be first and 10 Roan County out at midfield. You're watching and listening to Roan County Raider football on WVRC. Split in the back. at 225 Main Street in Spencer. Try our awesome drinks. It'll only take one...
to find out what we're all about. We offer loaded teas to jumpstart your day. All of our teas are sugar-free with just 24 calories. We have such a wide variety of combinations, you may never try the same drink twice. Phoenix offers protein shakes and protein coffees as well. We are open Tuesday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Follow us on Facebook at Phoenix Nutrition, Instagram at phoenix.nutrition.wv, and come visit us at 225 Main Street in Spencer. Proud supporter of all Roan County Raiders. We welcome you back inside the County Stadium press box here. Boy, we are working up here in the press box. <laughs> Joe McDonald is moving and shaking right, left, and up the middle. Speaking of up the middle, John, a great play to finish the first quarter after a very staggered start. Yeah, they, uh, they, you've seen a couple different formations. You've seen our spread formation. You've seen our heavy. That time we went to our, our double set, our double backs there. And just uh, a little counter inside. Sawyer Hunt with a nice nine-yard run. Back-to-back -back first down. Saw on the pass to Cottrell and the 10-yard run. First and 10. Raiders moving left to right now. Just at the 49 of Roan County. No score as we start the second quarter of play. Raiders with a modicum of momentum at the moment. Quick hitter up the middle. That is Clay Walker, and he is sent right back. He'll get to the midfield stripe. So a gain of one. But this Lincoln County interior and those linebackers are not scared one bit. Yeah, they are moving around, and they are matching our contact and matching the, uh, the toughness up front. The O-line has to, for Roan County, set the tone. Now we said they were going to have to be very wary of these blitzing linebackers coming from all angles. And it may take a little bit for these youngsters to diagnose that. Second and nine from the midfield stripe. Back split. Great house goes under center. Showing blitz. Scissors misdirection. This time it's B-Rich. And a hard set of yards for Brandon. He'll pick up six yards on the carry. Brings up third down and short. You can see a difference in B-Rich right now, Drew. He's understanding that when you're running on the inside, you're going to have to dump, you know, keep a hold of that ball, two hands, but you're going to have to deliver the hits as well, and it, he's doing a nice job. Ten and a half just about here in the second quarter. Clock running. No score. Roan Kenny with a third down and about three. Yard to reach is the Lincoln County 41. They'll send Sawyer Hunt over to the left side. That's the Lincoln County side under center. Great house. He'll roll. He'll dump it out. He's got his man. And there's a great catch by Lane Watson. Uh, the ball comes out, and it looks like oh, a couple got, of bigs. It. And Roan County is going to survive putting it on the ground. Someone came with a tomahawk chop and knocked that away from Watson. I think that Richard Greathouse and Noah Jett were there. Yeah, you can see here on the replay just that little flare out to Lane. And Lane cuts it back, but able to get a punch in there. Ball rolled out. Well, the chains will continue to move. This drive starting to show something inside the territory of the Panthers at the 36-yard line. Raiders moving left to right. Ten minutes in, rolling in the half. No score. Roan County trying to make it the first. Hunt now to the Roan County sideline. Heavy package. It'll be the third man. That is Watson. Watson busting through, running over defenders at the 30. And he made Zachariah Miller take some punishment for that tackle. Before that, though, six, maybe seven. Yep, nice play that time. Lane Watson always dynamic with the ball in his hands. We'll give him seven inside the 30 to the 29. Second down and three. Watson still the eye back in that heavy package. They'll give it to Lane again. Cuts it straight up the gut, fighting through. Look at the strength of those legs. And now he has two on the ball. I think he started working out recently. <laughs> he it's, could do a little bit better in the weight room. It is think. insane to me that he was a 145-pound wrestler last year. That wasn't last year. That was the year before. What is he, a senior? No, he's a junior this year. As a freshman, he, he was 145. 175, 175 last year. Last oh, year. It's 175. How yeah. about that? <laughs> he, he still put on 40 pounds. I mean. yeah. <laughs> in two years, he's put on a ton. Two years, he's put on 80 pounds. A timeout on the field. Lincoln County, really at this point right now, you're seeing, John, yeah. what we saw in that third 
quarter drive. We were worried we might not be seeing this so far. It just hasn't looked good for Roan County. But they're starting to find something, John, that really looks good to the eye, and the guys are starting to perform as well. Yeah, they're, they're going back to what we're comfortable with and, and uh, being comfortable with running heavy and Lane Watson back there dotting the eye. Uh, just a tough runner and nice blocking up front once again by the O-line. Understanding assignments, we, we stay in heavy quite a bit. When, when, you're, when you're putting in a new offense in a week sometimes and, and adding some wrinkles, it takes, it takes it a little while. So uh, the, the further on in the season that we go and we're able to do those kind of things throughout practice weeks, uh, I think that it'll be okay. But right now it's time to, be, to, to go back to what we know, and, and that's just uh, run the clock, run the football, and get ourselves into the end zone. Well, they've got the momentum right now building, and if you could put one in to finish that, yeah. that'll be a big boost for the Raider offense who looked relatively stagnant in the first quarter. 9.09 on a stop, second quarter clock, still no score. Rome County driving, though. They'll split a receiver wide to both sides. Backs offset in the backfield, Hunt and Walker. Great house, gonna hand off to Walker. Up the middle goes Clay at the 10 yard line, down inside the 10 to the seven. There was a nice hole as well. Yeah, beautiful trap that time. And a nice block by the guy here up front as Joe's gonna give us the replay. You can see the little trap. And I think it's gonna be, nope, it's basically a, a down block, but a nice run by Clay Walker. Raiders with a first and goal from the eight and a half. They'll stick with the same formation, backs offset in the backfield. Richardson around in motion near side. They'll hand it off to B. Rich, looking to fight through some traffic. He does, picks up a good first down carry inside the five. Austin Atkins on the tackle there for Lincoln County. And this is what we're accustomed to seeing, Drew. We're seeing Roan County's offensive line start to uh, dominate that trench and give our off or give our running backs an opportunity to pick up some yards. 824 and counting. Give B Rich four on the carry, second and goal from the four. Rich in motion to the backside. Here's the quarterback sneak up the middle and Greathouse with two hands on it got very close to the goal line. They'll stop him at the one and it will be third and goal from the one. No score, Roan County knocking on the door. Sometimes it can be scary if a quarterback tries to reach the ball out across the uh, the uh, end zone. We saw that last week uh, with uh, Shady Springs quarterback. Jacob Greathouse did a great job of just holding on to that thing with two hands and getting what he could. I formation. Now Watson goes back into the backfield to make it heavy. Third and goal from the one. Richardson following the lead blocking into the maroon end zone. The Raiders starting to get things back in order offensively, and they put together a fantastic drive to take the lead 6-0. Just follow your blocks and get yourself to that maroon end zone, like Drew said. Now we get to see Coben Cottrell kick this thing over the mountain. <laughs> Uncle Rico style, let's see if the snap is good. It is, the hold is down, the kick. Well, it wasn't the prettiest, but it certainly had enough distance. And the Raiders battle through some early adversity and they take the lead. 7-0 is your score. We'll be back with second quarter action here on WVRC. During some You've been enduring some of the hottest days of summer. Now it's time to enjoy the hottest deals of summer during the summer sales event at Jack Garrett Ford. Two new Broncos in stock, plus sizzling savings on used. Like a 19 Ford Echo Sport, now 19.9. Whoa, a 17 Kia Sportage, now 17.9. Local trade 2010 RAV4, 12.9. These and more while they last during summer sales savings. Jack Garrett Ford, Ripley Road, Spencer. Well, Matt White, they got it together, did Roan County's offense, and they put together a significant drive. Uh, it took a little bit to get going, but when they did, yeah, it was a good one, 13-play drive. They were backed up to the 16. That one started at the 23, but they covered 84 yards, 7.01 off the clock. Brandon Richardson with the one-yard touchdown run. Coben Cottrell with the extra point. Seven to nothing now, Roan County first to strike. Raiders would like to utilize that momentum here on the defensive side. Left to right, it will sail off of the 
foot of Coben Cottrell. Back deep to receive. Help me out, guys. Uh, looks like three and eight. Zachariah Miller and Andrew Banks back deep at the ten. Raiders leading 7-0, 733 mark of the first half. Took a while. Let's hope it's like a diesel engine, Roan County. Cottrell approaches, leg in, high. Angled kick taken at the 10 by Banks. Straight up the middle, Banks looking for room to run. Tries to bounce it outside. There's nobody there. Comes back to the near side right there for a beautiful stop. For the Raiders is Brody Proctor, the freshman, read it well. Yeah, Brody Proctor stayed home that time, Drew, did what he was supposed to do, makes the initial hit, and then Colton Starcher, another freshman in there on the special teams, cleans that thing up. But I'll tell you what, that, uh, that running back there, Banks, showing some nifty moves. A return on the play of 17 yards out to the 28 of Roan County. 7.23 is when the drive will begin. Right to left go the Panthers, 7-0 Rome County. All right, Joe Heem in the shotgun. And now Banks is going to be forced to check out. Yeah, I think it's an equipment issue maybe. So Banks will be on the bench for at least one play. And they will run Austin Atkins in as the back. Shotgun formation, twins to both sides. Joe Heem in the shotgun. Going to send Spinagle across to the wide side in motion. Oh, he turns. His running back was not there. And you think, John, the new backer in quickly, maybe not on the same page. Yeah, somewhat of a busted play. Lane Watson in there cleaning that thing up. Another tackle. But he got a couple on a busted play. They picked up about a yard. I'll give him a yard on the play. Second and nine at the 29-yard line. 6.55 and rolling. Rome County leading 7-0 in the first half. Near side hash moving right to left are the Panthers. Twins both sides once again. Joheem in the shotgun. Spadoggle across once again in motion. Snap back. Looking to throw. Rolling to the wide side. Dumping it out there. Pass caught right there is Hunt again. Tremendous defensive back play by the senior Sawyer Hunt. Yeah, he was step for step there. Ball just out to the flat. That's going to be three tackles for Sawyer Hunt here in the first half, Drew. Gain of three brings up third down and a long six at the 32 of the Panthers. 6.05 and counting. Second quarter, Rome County leading 7-0. Raider defense has been relatively stout here tonight. Got to watch for a screen in this third and sixth situation. Single man out to the wide side is Jordan Gregory and a whistle and a timeout coming here as it will be a 60-second timeout called by Lincoln County. Their second will take it with them. Be back after this message. The Spencer Pizza Hut is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the Fan of the Week each Friday of the Raider football season. Stop in and see us at 509 Ripley Road, fill out an entry form, and drop it in the box at the front counter for your chance to win a free, large, one-topping pizza. Stop by the Spencer Pizza Hut for all of your favorites. Original pan, original stuffed crust, hand-tossed or thin and crispy pizzas, breadsticks, cheese sticks, wings, oven-baked pasta, desserts, and more. Open seven days a week, dine in or carry out. Call us at 304-927-4619 or order online at PizzaHut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. 5.51 remaining, first half action. Rome County defense with another third down opportunity. Third down and a long six. On the far hash, right to left, going the Panthers at the, their own 31 and a half. Receiver to the near side, one to the far side. Two backs anchoring one on each side of Joheem in the shotgun. And we've got some motion and that's not gonna be good for Coach Brad Likens after a timeout <laughs> to get two offensive players moving. Yeah, not after a timeout. You stress how important this is. That's going to make it a third and long. 
They're going to put it on Atkins, but out on the near side. Gregory was heading to his route <laughs> early as well. So make it third down and 11, backing it up to the Panther 27-yard line. Now they'll change the formation. They'll bunch three receivers to the far side. That's the short side of the field, one to the near side. Joheem out of the shotgun. The snap is back. Joheem looking far side. He's going to have to scramble away. He does. Dumps it over the middle. Got his man. And making the grab and heading down the sideline is Banks. And he is going to take it to the house. Uh, and he flags down along the side. We're looking here. I do not see a penalty. I saw a couple of missed tackles by Roan County. And now some officials getting together. John, do you see a yellow hanky? Yeah, that's possibly going to be – I don't think it's yellow hanky. It could be, possibly be that he stepped out of bounds. I don't know. Uh, the official down here on the replay, as you can see, what happened there, Drew, is nobody wrapped up. Guys just – that was a sideline warning. So just a sideline warning. The touchdown is good. Yeah, just, just nobody wrapped up well enough on that tackle. And uh, Banks – not a bad athlete, Drew, and he was able to, to, to keep his feet and uh, continue on down. A hard runner and a relatively quick one as well. So 7-6 Rome County with 525 left in the first half of play. They'll send out the kicker, Derek Atkins. This could be important for the Raiders, trying to keep the lead. Snap is low. Put on the tee, though. Atkins rips it, and that one is through. Oh. And it is a tie ball game, seven apiece with 525 left in the first half. You're watching and listening to Raider football on WVRC. The Spencer Pizza Hut is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the Fan of the Week each Friday of the Raider football season. Stop in and see us at 509 Ripley Road, fill out an entry form, and drop it in the box at the front counter for your chance to win a free, large, one-topping pizza. Stop by the Spencer Pizza Hut for all of your favorites. Original pan, original stuffed crust, hand-tossed or thin and crispy pizzas, breadsticks, cheese sticks, wings, oven-baked pasta, desserts, and more. Open seven days a week, dine in or carry out. Call us at 304 926 4619 or order online at pizzahut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. Matt White, a comeback touchdown to tie it for Lincoln County. Some missed tackles, the issue on that big pass and catch. Yeah, to that point, defense had been stout, only given up 10 yards of offense, but 73 on that one pass and catch from Joe Heem to Drew Banks, 73 yard touchdown. The extra point was actually overturned, no oh. good. I thought that that thing yeah. was hooked. Yeah, it, it, the, the far side official kind of gave it the, the, the good, but the near one kind of said, nah, I don't, that, that, was, that was off. So Yeah, I saw the, the near one not put his hands up and then look over at the far official like, what are you saying? Yeah, so uh, seven to six now, the score, Roan County with a one point lead. Well, that's important for Roan County as this looks like a battle here in the ball game. Again, we talked about Lincoln County. They are not going to go away. They're going to fight you. And Atkins set to do the kicking from the 40 back deep. Richardson and Watson. Still five minutes, 25 seconds remaining in the first half. Atkins, high, shallow, angled kick, lands at the 20. Picked up at the 15, Watson heading far side, now cuts it back up the middle to the 30. He goes, Got breaks room. the tackle. Watson over the midfield stripe. Watson over the 45 and out at the 43-yard line. It's the kicker to make the play. Great eyesight for Lane Watson on the return. Yeah, when the ball bounces, everything kind of collapses in, Drew, and you can see Lane picking and choosing and just those long strides. I'm going to have to give him a hard time about the kicker making the stop here. <laughs> <laughs> the kicker in the sideline made hey, the stop. Listen, the kicker's mullet is very sweet. As a barber, you would know that. So a very big return. Unofficially 42 yards for Watson inside the Panther territory at the 43. Left to right go the Raider off it. See if they continue momentum from that last drive. 
Leading 7-6, 5-15 was, will be the starting time for this drive. Great House fumbles the snap, oh. jumps on it, and that'll be a loss of about five or six for Roan County, but could have been worse. Yeah, got the ball out, just wasn't able to get a grip on that thing. A loss of five will bring up second and 15. Back Roan County up to the Panther 47. The 48, sorry. And again, this hasn't been the cleanest first half for Roan County. They put the ball on the ground twice. Did not turn it over, but did throw an interception early. And they didn't look in sync until that last drive. See if they can get back on track here. Receiver to both sides. Richardson near side, Cottrell far side. Back split. They'll look for the dump pass out there. Slip screen. Up the middle goes Cottrell. Boy, he is lit up. At the original line of scrimmage, a great tackle. Didn't see who that was, but that was fantastic form. It was uh, Spitznoggle. Forward progress puts Cottrell just shy of the original line of scrimmage. Bring up third down and 11 just inside the 45 at the Lincoln County 44. Four minutes in rolling in this first half. 7-6, Raiders leading. I was looking for some spread action here. Watch Lane Watson. He's a big target. And I think Coach Paul Burdett wants to talk it over. The play clock was running down, and Roan County will burn their first time out of the ball game. 340 remaining on a big third and 11 after these messages. Family medicine is like a bridge, moving you from one side where you need vaccinations, screenings, and medical advice to the other where you receive essential care to remain healthy and active. I'm Caitlin McDonald, a nurse practitioner at Roan General Hospital, and I'm here to help you cross that bridge to a healthier life. I'm accepting patients of all ages at Roan General Medical Clinic and Southern Roan Medical Clinic offering family medicine, care you can trust close to home. On a third down opportunity for the Raiders, clock was running down, and so Roan County burns their first time out, making sure they're all on the same page. In this area, John, it's really maybe four down territory for Roan County, uh, so you want to get at least a chunk of yardage back, if not to get a big third down completion. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th I think you're, you're right. We're gonna, we're gonna have a couple plays here to pick up a first down with the clock. And uh, where we are on the field, you don't want to give Lincoln County an opportunity to maybe score again because at the half they will be receiving the receiving the kickoff. So it would be nice for the Raiders to be able to punch one in here before the half and uh, keep that lead. Ball resting at the Lincoln County, 44. The yard to reach is the Lincoln County, 33. Raiders moving left to right across the dial here in the second quarter. 340. On the clock here, the second, 7-6, Roan County. Single back, Richardson across in motion. They'll fake the give, rolling out, great house. Pumps gets away, looking down the field deep. He's got Cottrell, and Cottrell is bumped before the ball gets there. I was waiting for the yellow flag to come flying in. Cottrell came after the ball, and that's where the contact happened. And I was very happy to see the near side official <laughs> Throw that one. That was a great play by Greathouse on the pump fake. And you can see as Cottrell going up just got bumped by the defender. Yeah, yeah. It, it was kind of a bang-bang play, but I'm pretty sure Coach Tank Blosser was the one that threw that flag. He was right there in the ear of the official. Saying he took it out of the pocket of the official and launched <laughs> it. Lost it. I wouldn't put that past Tank Blosser. <laughs> so a big penalty defensively. And, again, you cannot underestimate – the play by Jacob Greathouse on the pump just to get out of the pressure. And he delivered a very nice ball once again. Yeah, they were looking for Lane right there. It was, it was kind of that, that tight end sneak out almost delay. Drive will continue first and 10 at the 29. Back split in the backfield, 3.30 on a stopped second quarter clock. Handoff up the middle. Walker trying to get what he can get, and that is nothing. Boy, the gut runs are not working very well at the moment. This Lincoln County front is very stout. Yeah, they are uh, They're making contact and holding on to our backs as soon as they get a chance to. 
Jeremiah Triplett with the tackle. He had to come off the field. His helmet popped off. Second and 10 at the 29 of Lincoln County. 3-10 and rolling, 7-6 Rome County. They'd love to put one in here late. Trippers or twin receivers both sides. Great house eyeing the sideline. Looks like Lane's out there. They're going to look for a maybe one-on-one -on -one here with him. Great house out of the shotgun. Snap back. Pumps looks near side. He'll launch it deep. He's got Richardson wide open. Brandon coming back for it. And Richardson makes an incredible catch. Step for step was the defensive back, but B. Rich eyes on the prize the whole time and, and gets that thing in. We'll look here. To, <laughs> if you watch pre-snap, B. Rich throws up the John Cena, you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> right here, great job of keeping his eye on the ball and a nice touchdown and a nice a little bit of breathing room here before the half for the Raiders. Double move, and he took off. He was open big time. The, the throw a little bit short, but he came back and wrapped it behind the back of the defender. Extra point kick up and good. Roan County scores with 2.46 left in the first half, leading it now 14-6. to six. Family medicine is like a bridge, moving you from one side where you need vaccinations, screenings, and medical advice to the other where you receive essential care to remain healthy and active. I'm Caitlin McDonald, a nurse practitioner at Rhode General Hospital, and I'm here to help you cross that bridge with a healthy life. I'm mixed patients of all ages at Rhode General Medical Clinic and Southern Rhode Medical Clinic offering family medicine, care you can trust close to home. Boy, a spectacular catch from Brandon Richardson. Off the pass from Jacob Greathouse, Matt White, and a very important score towards the end of the first half. Yeah, you really wanted to punch that one in if you're Roan County, and they did on a great drive. Started at the 43-yard line after the big uh, kickoff return. Uh, good field position from Lane Watson. Five-play drive, 43 yards, 239 off the clock. Jacob Greathouse to Brandon Richardson, 29-yard touchdown pass and catch. Extra point kick is good, 14 to six, Roan County here with 2.46 left to go in the half. Got a really neat message, a picture message from uh, my friend Missy Atkinson. She sent a picture watching the game from the Route 33 Steakhouse. Oh, that's great. <laughs> nice. Appreciate them putting that on for us. Yeah. Left to right, it will travel off of the leg of Coben Cottrell, back deep to receive. Is it still? Three and eight, Zachariah Miller and Andrew Banks. Yep, Miller's going to have the pink gloves on, Drew. Thank you. Okay. That will help. It will sail left to right off the foot of Cottrell. He'll approach, leg in. This one hammered. That is down to the three. Two-yard line taken by Banks. He's got wheels. Richardson approaching, and Richardson was the first to get there. Spun him around and finished off nicely by Brody Proctor. Very good coverage by those two young men. That, the foot may have been on the one, John, when Banks planted his foot. That back foot may have been on the one. That was a good kick. If everybody doesn't know, Drew is a kicker Former. Himself. Former kicker. Former. I couldn't put it 10 yards down the field these days. <laughs> 241 with Lincoln County obviously showing some potency with some big play potential. Let's see if Roan County can hold them here. The final 241, Raiders leading 14 to six. Twin receivers near, one to the far side. Backs, no, one back in the backfield directly behind Joheem. They'll send Miller in motion across, snap. They'll fake the give, Joheem keeps it himself and he shouldn't have. But Roan County's uh, gonna be whistled for a penalty. Yeah, it's gotta be a face mask there. Uh, Bunner was there, Bunner. <laughs> got his big mitt around the head of Joheim and tackled him for about a five-yard loss, but that's going to move down the field. Mm. Yeah. Happened last week as well with Lane, or not Lane Freeland, with uh, Tyson Freeland. That was a great play until right, right at the end. Yeah, it's just, just tough. Big guys trying to get in there and, and, and take some guys down. It's going to be a personal foul. So it's going to be the 15-yard variety. That will get the Panthers out of their own territory deep, and it'll be first down and 10 all the way out 
to the 38-yard line. 2.35 remaining in the half. Roan County leading 14-6. Two receivers split to the near side, one over to the far side. Joheim once again in the shotgun. Miller across in motion. Now he'll stop. Now he'll go. Now he'll stop. Now they'll send him back. Play hadn't even started yet. Now he'll come in motion across the far side. Snap is back. They'll toss it. And Miller looking for running room, and we've got a whistle. And he's going to pick up five or six, and a whistle comes in. A flag comes in, sorry. And you're hoping that's not another flag on a face mask. I don't think it is. I think it's in the area of holding, especially where they threw the, uh, well, may, maybe it was another face mask, yeah. There's a bunch of arms reaching out after Miller broke through that initial defensive front. And the So not a personal foul, face mask. And will it be enough for a first down is the question. Well, where do they mark him down first? And they're going to give him a first down. Uh, the official yet to mark it. I think he's going to mark it across where it would have been. You can see the uh, veteran chain crew member, Kenny G., over there moving. So a couple of personal or a couple of penalties on face mask, and it's out near midfield at the 48 of Lincoln County, 214 and rolling. Joheem out of the shotgun. Snap back. He's gonna look to run again. He's got pressure and he is drilled. Brandon Richardson unalived. The quarterback Joheem and now taking offense to it was a teammate. He comes in late. Oh. And now he throws his helmet. Oh, this young man has got to calm down. Richardson was not the first to get there, John, but he was the one that impacted and compacted Joheem. It was a clean hit, but the young teammates taking offense went over late and just drilled Richardson as he was walking away. That was, uh, I'm assuming, big brother. Gotcha. See here on the replay, they're looking for that little screen pass, but defense read that perfect. And uh, Andy Jetton was there to wrap him around low, and B. Rich cleans it up. We've got a player down here on the field right now. I think it's a cramp, possibly. But oh, man, you're watching good. the replay. And, and again, I, I feel for that young man, but you got to keep your head. It's very difficult, I imagine, to keep your head in those moments. But that was just a clean hit. Richardson came in very quickly to help clean up the tackle where Jetton had – Joheem slowed down, and Joheem, the actual player that was injured on the play, he's up and he's walking off. That's a good sign. And you just hate to see that, that young man, just frustration boiling over there. And then on top of that, you add insult to the injury with the throwing of the helmet, and that yeah. young man is going to be gone for tonight. Tonight and next week as well. Mm. Now again, as Matt mentioned, uh, it was number 54, Kyle Joheem. Yeah. So you would assume Matt. My assumption would be yeah. big brother, big cousin, something like yeah. that. Uh, you're trying to take up for your guy, but uh, yeah, it's unnecessary. Yeah, you got to be smarter if, than if, that if, in the heat of there, the moment. If there was know. something there um, of, a, of a vicious nature with the hit from B. Rich, uh, you've got to let the officials sort that out. Yeah. You, yeah. you just can't lose your cool there. That's – Unacceptable. Yeah, good clean hits. The play lost a ton of yards, and it's going to get even worse for Lincoln County. The clock showing one minute, 58 seconds. Rome County leading 14-6. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I hate to see that. Uh, got confirmation the quarterback's brother. Just taking up for your brother, man. Yep. That's what they're doing. And, you know, you can I, you, you can. You can understand the frustration, the anger yeah. that comes with that. But uh, after the first shove, man, just frustration boiled over for him in the helmet. <laughs> so, wait a minute. 
Looks like it's going to be offsetting penalties because they did call the penalty on Brandon Richardson. But well, there was no penalty thrown until. There was no penalty thrown on the hit, John. The first penalty came out after the shove. Right. The second penalty came after the helmet throw. There was no penalty thrown on the hit. Oh, yeah. But the official just said <laughs> there was a penalty on, on B. Rich. But then two versus one. Well, so it well, kind of cancels it, each other well, out. It, do, it doesn't entirely cancel itself out because the penalty on Richardson happened during the play. So that one was going to be marked off beforehand. And then they, you see them walk off the next two penalties that happened after the stoppage of the play. Gotcha. Well, Coach Matt Peary out on the field, the defensive coordinator, wondering what in the heck his boy did on that play other than a really hard hit. But the Raiders are going to be penalized for the hit. Again, there was no flag thrown. The first penalty that came out came out directly after the shove. The second one came out after the helmet throw. And I guess as the officials were able to talk it over, they said, well, that's going to be a penalty. Act. Gotcha. So, however it works out, again, it does work out for Rome County because they're going to send Lincoln County way back on the two personal fouls. So they new need 37 and 8, so 45 yards. Again, you just I, again. I just, so those situations I hate to see. Yeah. And, and I feel for number 54, the brother of Joheim, man. You absolutely feel for him. On top of that, Joheim injured, and so they're going to bring Atkins, Austin Atkins, in the senior to run the quarterback position here for the final 142 until we see if they check out Joheim and he turns out to be okay. Yeah, I'm looking for him over there on the sideline. I do not see him. They do have a medical tent that they brought. Gotcha. So it's going to be a little tough here. New quarterback kind of backs against the wall. Just As Matt work. said, second down and uh, further forever. I can't 45. add it up. 45. 120 on a rolling second quarter clock, 14-6 Raiders. Receivers everywhere for Atkins. He's going to keep it, though, off tackle. And he'll pick up a couple of yards, give him three. Out to the 15, Roan County going to burn their second time out, John, to see if they can get the ball back here with a little bit remaining. 107 left in the half, 14-6, Roan County. It'll be a third down and 40 for Lincoln County. Family medicine is like a bridge, moving you from one side where you need vaccinations, screenings, and medical advice to the other where you receive essential care to remain healthy and active. I'm Caitlin McDonald, a nurse practitioner at Rome General Hospital, and I'm here to help you cross that bridge to a healthier life. I'm accepting patients of all ages at Rome General Medical Clinic and Southern Rome Medical Clinic, offering family medicine, care you can trust close to home. Some interesting action before we finally took a break there. A big hit by Brandon Richardson on the quarterback, Joe Heem. His elder brother took a little bit of offense, shoved Richardson, and got more frustrated through his helmet. Unfortunately for that young man, his night is over. And again, you can understand him wanting to take up for his little brother, and, and I get that. A penalty called on Richardson after the fact, and then two personal fouls have sent Lincoln County back inside their own 10. They've got it out to the 15 after Roan County burns a timeout with 107 left on a third down and significant. So the Raiders trying to get the ball back with a little bit of time, see if they can get something working here, leading 14 to six. One receiver, both sides. Working to the near side, looks like Atkins wanted to throw, he'll tuck and run. Flag comes in from the backside though, and that may be a little more on the Panthers. The clock will stop at 101. Clay Walker delivers some punishment there on that tackle, Drew. I imagine Roan County probably going to decline this one, John, make it fourth down, try to get it back faster. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fourth down, third down. What down is it? I don't know. <laughs> I mentioned last week we were in – we were, <laughs> yeah. we were in preseason mode the right. first game. Uh, these guys may have been off last week. We're not well, sure. Well, listen, Kenny G over there has the four up on the uh, 
the, the marker. So I, I'm going to go with Kenny. He never changed it, and the way he's looking at the official, he said, no, it's fourth. He's, he's kind of posing, modeling for him. <laughs> Check it out. Fourth down. So Roe Kenny declines the penalty, goes ahead, and utilizes that last time out to stop the clock at 101. And the Raiders will get the ball back with a minute, well, a little less than a minute. And right now would be a time we mentioned in the pregame, John, special teams would be really nice here if you could get something going, whether it be maybe a block punt or right. at least a good return. Right. But we also talked about this, Drew, giving Coben Cottrell an opportunity if we get close enough to try to put that boot to work and kick a field goal. So a good position for the Raiders right now. We're up 14-6, to 101 left to go here in the second quarter. So good position for us. A lot of different things can happen. Coach Burdett loves to put some, some trick plays together every week, um, some stuff that we uh, were accustomed to seeing. So you might see a little double pass. You might see something like that. Well, set to punt, Derek Atkins, the junior, and he will be just a yard outside of the end zone, standing in Lincoln County territory, the return men, Watson and Richardson, at the 45 of the Panthers. Here comes the snap. It's a low one. Handled, Atkins gets it away, spiraling punts over towards midfield, and Watson will call a fair catch and then forgot that he called a fair catch. <laughs> I don't think he forgot. I think he's just messing with him. Took off for a second. Somebody's car alarm was going off, and it was Joe's. <laughs> so Watson with the fair catch just shy of midfield. The Raiders, 54 seconds. No timeouts, though, with which to work. So they'll have to hustle here if they want to make something happen. They'll stack the receivers on the near side, twins to both sides, shotgun for Great House. Clay Walker to his right, and it looks like the Panthers will call their final timeout. And we'll take it with them, and we'll come back with a final 54 seconds here in the first half. Rome County leading 14 to six. Ridgetop Rentals, located at 3502 Clay Road in Spencer, West Virginia, is the place to go for all your equipment needs. We have tractors, dozers, backhoes, excavators, termites, air compressors, straw blowers, generators, jackhammers, torpedo heaters, and much more. We are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. You can check us out on the web at ridgetoprentals.machinerytrader.com, follow us on Facebook at Ridgetop Rentals LLC, or you can call us today at 304 908 20 or 304-927-1418. Ridgetop Rentals is a proud supporter of all Roan County Athletics. Let's go Raiders. 54 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. Well, Roan County, no timeouts, but they'll start at half the field. And they have some explosive players if they can get things dialed in. Twins both sides. Clay Walker to the right of the shotgun. As Greathouse stands in the shotgun. Snap back, rolling near side, looking, looking, pumps, looking over near the edge, and boy, he tried to thread the needle at the 40-yard line, and that one was dangerous. Coming over at the last second was number 81, Blade Atkins. Poking that one away from the intended target, Coben Cottrell. Clock will stop at 49.1, 14 six Raiders. And again, they are kicking away in the second half, so they're trying to get something going. And as ben, John Penna mentioned, you got the leg of Coben Cottrell. You'd have to get some yardage, maybe about 30 yards here, to be comfortable. They'll stick with the ace formation. Twins both sides. Walker now moves to the left. Snap back. Looking outside, they'll dump it. Here's the slip screen. Watson to the near side. Watson's got to break one oh. tackle. If he did, he had had extra yards. He'll get eight, but the clock will run. Or will it? No, you got an injury here. Oh, tough, tough. An injury for Lincoln County. That will stop the clock 40.7. While this young man is down, obviously Roan County's offense going to huddle around Coach Burdett and try to get a play ready to go. 
And Lincoln County doing the same for their defensive side because they know the Raiders, as soon as this gets back, the Raiders are going to want to snap the ball quickly. Yeah, it looks like down on the field they're working on maybe a shoulder, an arm. Up quickly, though, for that young man, and that is number 56, David Stevens. Is that yeah, right? Stevens has been tough here. Absolutely. Tonight on that defensive front. And, and again, he was, he was seven yards downfield making that play. Yeah, he was one of their leading tacklers last week against Princeton. Yeah. So Stevens is able to walk off on his own power. And officials blow the play ready to go. Raiders hustling to their set. Twins both sides snap back. Quick hitter to the near side. That one pulled off the turf. That'll be a first down. Great catch by Cottrell. The clock will stop at 29 while they reset the chains. Quick little play, first down for the Raiders. Greathouse going to snap it and fire it into the turf. So it'll be second down with no time off the clock. Why are they rolling the clock? Why are they rolling the clock? Boy, that's that white hat right now struggling, guys. Yeah, I think that whole uh, <laughs> uh, altercation earlier really got him a little flustered. <laughs> I, did he miss the spike of the ball? Did he miss that play? Well, if you don't mind the spike, clock, it's, it's an going, incomplete yeah, it's an pass. Incomplete pass. <laughs> yeah, which the clock would stop. Well, they still have first down on the chain. Did they not allow that play to happen? I don't guess. Well, they took they took four seconds off the clock. <laughs> clock is running. Oh, Still my goodness. Still first down. Jeez. Great house. He's going to launch it deep. Cottrell out there. Cottrell trying to make the play. He comes back again, and that is going to be a face-guarding penalty. And Cottrell, for the second time, making a play, John, on a yeah. comeback route. Yeah, that time, ball's just put on a perfect spot here. Great House is going to take that step and launch that thing. Cottrell goes up, but the defender didn't even look back for the ball, and that's what the penalty is going to be. Roan County now in great position to score here again before the end of the half. We could score on the ground through the air or possibly make a kick here. Zachariah Miller coming up a little bit lame. It's just a cramp, it looks like, so that's a good sign. One thing to think about, though, Coben Cottrell, when he Came got up, a up little bit. his plant foot – the leg on his yeah. plant foot was cramping up, not well, his kick leg. He's he's got a he's got some tape on one of those ankles, and that may be something to help with kicking or uh, or may, maybe a little bit dinged up there. So the opportunity is this for Roan County. They took four seconds, by the way, away from Roan County. They didn't reset the clock yeah. before they ran it. They took four seconds off, and they just let him go with that and ran the clock again. So <laughs> we lost a I lot of time. I understand how you don't even – the, the, did they just say the spike play didn't happen? I guess. I, I they guess didn't because they, they didn't change the down marker. Yeah, or, so or, if it know. didn't happen, <laughs> give those four seconds back. Right. right. They did not. The officials uh, struggling here. And we're, no, we're not harping on these guys. It's just <laughs> kind of funny for us. But the, the situation is this, John. You've got 12 seconds left, no timeout. So you're either going to dump one to the outside edge yeah. or you're going to take a shot to the end zone. And then I think if Coben's feeling it right now from the corner or from the uh, near side hash, let him go at it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think first of all, you need to look at the end zone here and uh, see how much time you have left. And then from there, you assess whether you want to go for it or you want to let, uh, let your, yeah, your so awesome kicker from, from get a kick. From this spot, you'd be looking at 41 yards. I mean, I, I, mean, I think Coben's got the leg. I think he can kick one that far. Well, good to see Miller able to get up. He's just walking gingerly with those cramps. That's early season guarantees here in West Virginia. <laughs> yeah. So the Raiders up to the ball, ready to go here on a first down and 10 from the 24 of the Panthers. 12 seconds remaining. Richardson comes across to the far side in motion. Great house out of the shotgun. He'll roll to the far side. Richardson goes deep. He's open for a second, makes the grab, spins into the end oh. zone, but a flag is down on the near side. What a catch, spin, and out of bounds. They said Richardson went at the three, but I think it's not going to matter. 
Raiders called for a holding penalty with four seconds left on the clock. Now that makes things a little more interesting because you're going to back it out basically out of range for a kick. Yeah. So you're going to have to just go for it here for Roan County. Yeah, I like what we have option-wise, though, Drew. You have you have Lane Watson and Coben Cottrell. Both those guys, big, tall receivers, could go up and get the ball. And you got B-Rich that can just outrun mostly anybody. And uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what we do here. Four seconds left. 14-6, to six, Roan County with four seconds left in the first half. Raiders break the huddle. Twins to both sides. Great house out of the shotgun. Two safeties standing at the five-yard line for the Panthers. Snap back, dropped, picked up quickly. Greathouse running for his life. He'll dump it out to the far side. Overshoots Richardson, and that will end a very exciting and interesting last minute of the first half of play. Roan County takes the lead into the halftime locker room. Your score, 14 to 6. Break to take for our sponsors. When we return, recap the first half, give you your statistics, and we'll take, some, take a look at some scores around the state in all three classes. You're watching and listening to Raider Football on WVRC. Come into Stats Pharmacy where our patients' good health is our main concern. We have a drive through window where you can conveniently drop off and pick up your prescriptions and over-the-counter medications. Refill your prescriptions anytime online at www.statspharmacy.com or from your iPhone or Android phone using the Refill RX mobile app. No waiting in long lines. Just call ahead and your order will be waiting for you. We look forward to serving you at Stats Pharmacy, located at 100 East Main Street in Spencer. You can call us at 304-927-2980. It's almost back to school time and you know what that means. Morning school bus stops, student drop-off areas, and evenings spent driving the kids to all their activities. With all this in mind, safety is key. Are your wiper plates effectively cleaning your windshield for a better view? Do your brakes help you to stop on a dime? Whether you need brakes, rotors, calipers, wiper blades, or belts, Willard Starchers has the best staff in town and keeps quality parts in stock to ensure your car is safely operating in tip-top shape. Stop by Willard Starchers today, located behind Spencer Middle School, or give us a call, 927-2520. Willard Starchers, open seven days a week. I'm Circuit Judge Anita Harold Ashley, and I'm proud to sponsor this ad supporting the Roan County Raiders. I've spent a lot of time participating in sporting events in my lifetime as a player, a Raider parent, and a fan. I've observed there are lots of ways people enjoy the games. It might be like my dad who quietly studied the game to catch stats, or my dear mom who gained a reputation for yelling at the refs. Or the fan may be there primarily to enjoy the band or the cheerleaders. But it's clear, we're all rooting for the Raiders. Let's win. Paid for by the committee to re-elect Judge Anita Harold Ashley, Kate J. Burbank Treasurer. When it comes to providing facility solutions and maintenance support to the industrial and railroad industries as well as port and inland terminals and Department of Defense operations, nobody does it better than Air Production and Service Inc. At APS, our team is dedicated to providing high quality service, parts and equipment for your air production systems. Whether you are in need of air compressor products or services, you can turn to our team with confidence. We have offices located in Jacksonville, Florida, Corbin, Kentucky, Pembroke, North Carolina and Spencer, West Virginia. To expand our reach and make Make it easier for you to get the help you need with minimal weight or frustration. Contact us today to learn more about the different types of services and products we offer. Contact your local APS representatives, Mike and Michelle Spears in Spencer, West Virginia at 304-927-2550. Proud supporter of all Roan County Athletics. This is XYZ Insurance. How can I help? I have a question about my home policy. Okay, question about phone policy. <sighs> Home policy. Okay, gnome policy. H-O-M-E, home. Technology is great, but sometimes it's better to talk with a real person. With Erie Insurance, you have a caring, independent agent who's with you from beginning to end. We don't have any H-O-M-E's on record. Your Erie agent in Spencer is Ashley Insurance. Get a quote today at ashleyinsures.com. Go to erieinsurance.com for company licensure and product details. is a very, very, very fine house. 
This is Jennifer Board Nichols at Board de Pew Realty. So many things have changed around us lately, and we are all concerned about what the future holds. During these uncertain times, we want you to know that one thing will not change, and that's the service and the professionalism we will offer you at Board de Pew Realty. My grandmother started this company over 64 years ago, and one thing hasn't changed. If you use Board de Pew Realty to buy or sell your home, you are guaranteed to receive service that is guided by principles like honesty and wisdom and a conscience. Owning a home is the American dream, and that hasn't changed. So let Board de Pew Realty show you the way to that dream. Even if the times are changing, principles and service shouldn't. So let Board de Pew Realty show you that some things remain the same. Our house is a very, very, very house. This message comes to you courtesy of Brandon Dental Associates, conveniently located on Hospital Drive in Spencer, West Virginia. Benjamin Franklin is credited with saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so it is with daily and regular professional preventive dental care. Brushing twice a day and flossing once a day, combined with regular professional preventive care at least twice a year, can help prevent a lifetime of dental Call Brandon Dental at 304-927-2775 for your family's dental care. That's Brandon Dental Associates at 304-927-2775. Calhoun Banks is your hometown bank. We've been serving Calhoun and the surrounding areas for over 120 years. We offer many financial and banking services, including commercial, online and mobile banking, mobile wallet, our annual deals on wheels loan sale, home and construction loans, and we specialize in land only loans. With offices in Grantsville, Arnoldsburg, Elizabeth and Glenville, we are ready to serve the needs of all of our communities. Stop in and see us at one of our four locations today. Visit our website at CalhounBanks.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CalhounBanksWV. Lobby hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Friday lobby hours are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturdays, our drive through is open 8.30 a.m. to noon. Equal Opportunity Lender, member FDIC. Carpenter's General Store in Spencer has been saving you money and giving you the best selection in Roan County since 1996. We have an amazing selection of domestic, import, and craft beers, ciders, and wines at the absolute lowest prices anywhere. And if we don't have it, we'll get it for you. We have a sporting goods section with all the right fishing gear, locally crafted lures, and live bait. And we also carry a great selection of firearms and ammunition. And once again, if we don't have it, we'll get it for you with the lowest prices guaranteed. We're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come see us at 746 Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. It's a convenience store with a whole lot more. We welcome you back inside County Stadium here at the half. A very interesting First half of play from both sides. This thing got off to a very tough start for Roan County. They took the opening kick on a third down and six. A late pass attempt by Jacob Greathouse picked off deep in Roan County territory. So the Raiders, after last week's first half, giving the ball away twice, turn it over on the first drive of the ball game. The defense, though, does a good job. They move, in fact, Lincoln County back and force a punt. So Roan County gets the ball back and just didn't look in sync offensively on the first couple of drives. Had to punt it away with Coben Cottrell. It was a field position ball game for the majority of the first quarter. It was played between Roan County's 20-yard line and Lincoln County's 40-yard line for the first quarter, most of it. Then, just like last week in the third quarter, Roan County mounted a really nice drive. Successful, a long and sustained drive to score. They got the touchdown and the two or the extra point was good. So Roan County took the first lead, seven to zero. Things did uh, not stay normal at that point. It got squirrely again back and forth. It was Aaron Banks getting loose on a third down and about 12 at the, about the 30-yard line of Lincoln County is just a screen to the outside. Banks broke a couple of tackles down the sideline. He went. He makes the touchdown to make it 7-6. The extra point called good first by one of the side or one of the officials, and then the other one waved it off. So we came back from break. Turns out they did not give the extra point to Lincoln County. Roan County leading 7-6 at that point. 
And the Raiders really started to play a little better through mid part of the second quarter. They got a second touchdown on the board to make it a 14 to six lead. And the chaos really happened in the last couple of minutes. Uh, Rome County had Lincoln County uh, on a third down or a second down and long. A play that was very interesting right around the 40 yard line. It was a scramble by the quarterback, Lucas Joheim. He was held up for a second by Rome County defensive end, Andy Jetton, and immediately coming in, Brandon Richardson. Now, what the officials called there was not a late hit, John. What they called was a penalty of hitting up near the head area, and yeah. that's where they talked it over, and they were able to find out that they got together and said it was a little bit high as Joheim was falling down, and Richardson got him a little high. So understand that penalty for sure now. Uh, but after that penalty happened, obviously – the brother of the quarterback coming to uh, the defense of his brother and uh, gives a little shove to Richardson. That's a penalty. And then really goes uh, goes off and takes his helmet off and throws it. And that uh, young man's night is done. You hated to see that. Again, just trying to take up for your brother. I understand that, but you can't do the second thing right after the first. So that was the first part that was crazy. And then Roan County was able to get a stop. They were able to get the ball at midfield with one minute left. In the half, they had a couple of good looks, got it all the way down uh, to the 20-yard line. But uh, Roan County with a penalty here and a missed opportunity there just couldn't get it. They were backed up on a penalty further than Coben Cottrell could kick, and so they had to take a shot uh, that they could take. Uh, and so that's how the first quarter, first half ended. But it was very interesting at the last two or three minutes of that first half. Yeah, we, we were cruising along there through that first quarter and, and the beginning of the second, and then things kind of got jumbled up. We were able to score uh, and do some things, and then and then the, the the nice play that Lincoln County had to get themselves on the board. But, you know, Roan County has played pretty steady. You know, the offense didn't look uh, in sync, in, in tune um, right there early, but once you go back to heavy, it's our bread and butter, man, and, and – you can get some things working, and then, then you go to our maroon or our white set. Uh, once once we do that, we're very comfortable. Um, but uh, overall, I thought it was a I thought it was a pretty pretty decent first half. Just got to clean a few things up, and and we will as the season goes on. Again, I like the um, every once in a while sending Jacob Greathouse in motion or in motion, rolling out and looking down the field and. A couple of big plays that weren't catches were Coben Cottrell. Yeah. On, he came back to two routes and got penalties on pass interference, it's called. Those were in very important times. So I really thought that he did a jo good job with that. I thought that Richardson ran hard. Uh, Walker, not a lot of touches here so far. More used right now as a blocking back. Watson, of course, running hard when he gets an opportunity as well. It's just a chess match right now. The coaching staff trying to find out what they can exploit and uh, what will work properly in the second half on offense against this very aggressive and very stout defense right now. I thought that Lincoln County's defense played fantastic in the first half defensively. Roan County doing very well, just missed a couple tackles on the one touchdown. That was, yeah, that was basically it. Another thing for Lincoln County, they've they've gotten dinged up a little bit, so there's going to be some guys maybe in different roles. Uh, uh, you know, you, you had 56 go down there before the uh, end of the end of the half, and, and he was he was a really force on defense, was really good. So you're going to get some different guys on the pass interference. You brought a new kid in, uh, number 81. Uh, that's also at Atkins. He's a sophomore. He got the uh, defensive uh, pass interference called on him. So, you know, Lincoln County is going to have to change their things up as well. But I think Roan County is just going to go back to what we'd like to do, and that's run the football and uh, really challenge our offensive line to open up those holes and defense just continue to play the way, the way that we have been playing. Uh, speaking of injuries, we do hope the best for uh, the couple of players that have been carted off, especially obviously the starting quarterback, Lucas Joheim. Uh, who took a tough hit there in the second quarter and stayed out for the half. We hope that he is okay. 14-6 to six is your halftime score. Matt White, break it down. Yeah, it kind of looked like uh, Joe Heem had his pads off on the shoulder or, or on the sideline, so probably uh, probably not likely to return in this one. But, yeah, you definitely will send out well wishes to him for a uh, speedy recovery. Uh, Roan County. Offense a little bit lackluster at times. You know, I think some of the things not not working exactly the way we had hoped. But uh, overall, a lot of uh, spreading the production out, I guess, amongst guys. Uh, B, B. Rich was leading the way. Brandon Richardson, seven carries, 14 yards, and a touchdown. Lane Watson, two carries for 17. 
Clay Walker, four carries for 15, and Sawyer Hunt with one carry for 11. Jacob Greathouse was eight for 12 through the air for 80 yards. He had a touchdown and one interception. Brandon Richardson with two catches for 29 yards and a touchdown. Coben Cottrell with three catches for 29, and Lane with three catches for 22. Eight first downs in the half for Roan County, five penalties for 55 yards, one turnover, and about a 15-minute time of possession defensively. Uh, Richardson and Watson with four tackles apiece, and Sawyer Hunt with three. Uh, 55 yards on the ground, 80 through the air. That's 135 yards of total offense for the Raiders in that first half. For the Lincoln County Panthers, uh, Zachariah Miller with one carry for six yards and Austin Atkins with three carries for three yards. Roan County's defense up front been very stout in this ball game. Uh, Sands the one uh, long pass and catch. Uh, Lucas Joheim, he was six for seven through the air for 87 yards and a touchdown. Drew Banks had three catches for 81 yards and a score. Uh, Miller with two catches for three, and Spinoggle with one catch for three. One first down in the first half for Lincoln County. Six penalties for 75 yards. Uh, no turnovers, a nine-minute time of possession. Uh, Lucas Joheim, Alex Banks, and David Stevens with three tackles apiece, and Austin Atkins with an interception. Uh, rushing uh, yards on the ground, total for a team, negative three. 87 through the air, so that's 84 yards of total offense for the Lincoln County Panthers. So add that all up, and you've got a 14-6 ball game here at the half. Roan County on top. Lincoln County will take possession to begin the second half of play. The band on the field right now doing the halftime festivities. We'll take a break for our sponsors. When we return, right before the second half kick, we'll take some or take a look at some scores around the state of interest in all three classes. You're watching and listening to Roan County Raider football on WVRC. Stop by Spencer Cash Saver to check out our fresh produce, quality meats, and our new grab-and-go deli sliced meats and cheeses. New two ads start every other Thursday with the best prices for your budget. Save money and shop local at Spencer Cash Saver. Tis why D and D with dynamite. D and D, they'll treat you right. D and D, with lots of cars. D and D, with so eyes. Come on down to D and D Motors and see Dan for your next quality used car. And for everyone who already has a used car, come and see Donna and her team of mechanics at D&D Customer Care for all your maintenance needs, from oil change to brakes and tires to alignment and everything in between. D&D, we are a full-service business that can meet all of your automotive needs. Call the dealership at 304-519-2157 or D&D Customer Care for your next appointment at 304-927-5688. Since 2019, DW Excavating has been serving Roan and surrounding counties. We offer services including, but not limited to, repairing driveways, construction site preparation, drainage solutions, property brush clearing, farm road construction, culvert repair and installation, and utility line installation and repair. We provide free estimates. Check out our Facebook page or contact us at 304-532-2968 for more information. DW Excavating, taking pride in our work and in our community. DW Excavating is a proud supporter of Auburn County High School Athletics. Go Raiders! This is Lady Raider volleyball and softball player Mahaley Nicholson for Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Since 2016, ECI has provided West Virginia with top-notch service for both home and commercial needs. We pride ourselves on working closely with our clients to ensure that projects are completed in a timely manner, that customer expectations are met, or in many cases exceeded. Regardless of the job size, we have solutions for everyone. We specialize in septic systems, brush removal, dirt work, asbestos removal, and more. Check us out on the web at www.ecywv.net or contact us for a quote at 304 532 
304-532-7653. Fax number 304-532-7653. Environmental Compliance Incorporated. Ed Nicholson, owner, West Virginia Contractors License 055775. This is Ashton Rhodes, Chronic Care Manager at Roan County Family Healthcare. Are you struggling to control your blood pressure, lower your A1C, or manage other chronic health conditions? Do you ever feel overwhelmed or unsure after an office visit and need some extra help? If that's you, we can help. Roan County Family Healthcare is now providing chronic care management services for qualifying patients. By enrolling in our services, you will receive one-on-one -on -one consultation, an individualized comprehensive care plan, education, monthly check-ins, and more. All of this will allow you access to your care team easily for questions, concerns, or follow-up. So are you ready to team up and find a healthier version of you? Give me a call at 304-927-8139. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Let me help you manage your chronic conditions. Roan County Family Healthcare, healthcare for the entire family. Go ahead, car. Make my day. Do you have one of those intermittent electrical problems that no one can find? Let Groves Auto Service in Arnoldsburg, West Virginia diagnose and fix that pesky problem for you. Call Groves Auto Service for an appointment today and we will get to the bottom of it. Call 304-655-6765. Groves Auto Service and don't forget to check out our Facebook page. We welcome you back to County Stadium at the half. Roan County leading Lincoln County in a dogfight, 14 to 6. We've got a couple of words for people uh, saying we've got some fuzzy reception on our video. We invite you, if you're watching from your phone, make sure if you're watching YouTube that you've turned your resolution up to the highest quality that can be. We've checked everything we can check, and we've got clear signal up here. So hopefully uh, everybody can get that fixed up on their end, and hopefully they get a clear picture. Yeah, we, and we appreciate up here. the ones that have, have sent messages in to us so yes. we, can, we can keep uh, keep uh, our, our ends tight. I want to make sure we're giving the best quality picture we can absolutely do. Hope uh, everybody's enjoying the broadcast and enjoying watching Raider football here. I know a lot of people tuning in from the Route 33 Steakhouse. There's only one other place I'd rather be here tonight, and that right. would be there. Uh, but we got work to do here for the second half. So do the Raiders, uh, guys. They have got to... Uh, continue to improve here in the second half against a very feisty Lincoln County team. While we got a second, the teams are out warming up for the second half. Matt White, let's take a look at some scores around the state in all three classes. Yeah, speaking of some work to do, Ripley trailing at the half 20 to nothing to Buck Hannon Upshur. That's a future opponent for Roan County as is the Ripley Vikings. Uh, big matchup there. Independence, number one in double A, going up a rank against Oak Hill. That one's tied 20 to 20 at the half. Big uh, be a big boost there for Oak Hill. As you know, Independence is going to score some points throughout the season. Uh, big game in AAA. Morgantown, number seven, up 22 to 14 over number four, Bridgeport. Check a couple of other scores here within our listening area. Go to AA. Lincoln High School up north, up 27 to nothing on Elkins. Scott and Wayne in a battle at 12 to 9. Number three, Scott up at the half. Scott looked great last week. Yeah, they really last did. Week. Uh, number four, North Marion, another future opponent of Roan County. They're up 34 0 on Triple A Preston. Battle going on there in, up in Oak Glen. St. Mary's in single A going up to Oak Glen. St. Mary's is up 22 to 13 at the half. Winfield and Hoover, Winfield up third quarter action, 28 to 13. That's the double A game of the week. Somebody hug Jamie. And our friends up north in Braxton County having a tough go of it against Lewis. They are trailing 41 to nothing. That one's now in the fourth quarter. Other top ones here, uh, Mingo Central, another future opponent for Roan County up. 40 to nothing on West Side and Shady Spring, the team that Roan County just beat last week, up 21 to seven on Nicholas County at the half. That could be promising for Roan County if Shady Spring were to reel off some victories here this season. Uh, the fight in Eduardo is a tough time up in Williamstown. They're down 44 nothing at the half. Wahama up on Doddridge, single way game of the week, 42 to 18 in the fourth quarter. 
Well, a score here meant to go for Calhoun Valley Wetzel up 20 to 7 at the half. One of the Red Devils. And no score reported here for Work County. They are playing Magnolia at home. But as always, most important score of the night, Roan County 14, Lincoln County 6, as we're getting ready to start second half action. It will be Lincoln County possession to begin half number two. They will attack left to right across radio dials. And Roan County will be kicking from right to left here in the third. Back deep to receive is Banks. And now they have sent Atkins back deep, Austin Atkins. Good eye, Drew. Only once in a while, buddy. Hey, Only when, once when in a while. you do it, I'm going to give you credit. Thank you. He's looking from his good eye. I give, I give you enough grief <laughs> for your eyesight. Cottrell set to do the kicking as we get set for the second half. Rome County. I would love to see another half like we did last week in the second half against Shady Spring. Well, the Raiders well, ready we, to go. We received the ball. I heard somebody in the other booth there say. Raiders yeah, were ready to go. <laughs> they took off without an actual uh, official's whistle. <laughs> That's how ready they are, John. They took off. Cottrell was uh, ready to kick that thing. Well, this back judge here on the near side, he was all the way down at the other end. I think he was uh, confused about which direction we were going to be kicking. There is the whistle. Now Cottrell can approach. Leg in, high, end over end kick. That will drop at the five. I think Banks thought that Atkins was going to take it. It went right in between the two of them and into the end zone for the touchback. That's one of those, I got it, you got it, I got it. <laughs> Who's got it? There nope. it goes. Nobody got it. <laughs> hey, touchback. Possession will begin at the 20 of the Panthers. I'll chalk that one up for another touchback for Coben Cottrell early in this year. He's really shown a... Knack for being able to knock that ball deep. Well, we'll see if Roan County can continue in the second week with a good second half. Receiver sent out to the wide side. The far side of the field is Lincoln County's. A little stick eye formation, or is that an offset eye? Uh, it's kind of a heavy with and a wing. And off second man through. That's Spinagle, and he will follow the bigs and pick up six. Out to the 30 or the 26 on the first down carry. Clay Walker and Lane Watson with a little bit of help from Sawyer Hunt in there on the stop, but a decent little run on first. Raiders leading 14 to 6. Second down and four at the 26 yard line. High formation. And the ball dropped on the ground, picked up, and I think carried. Back to the line of scrimmage. And that's Atkins again, the new quarterback, Atkins. Yeah. As Joheim went down in the second quarter. Third down and four. Early third down opportunity for Roan County to make a big play. 11 minutes and rolling. Starting series of the second half. Receiver to the near side of the field. Backs in the eye. You've got a wing to the far side. Snap back. Here's the pitch to the outside. Banks has speed. Can he get there? No. Cannot. Lane Watson first. <laughs> Lane says, I'm here for it all night. That's six tackles here in the game for Lane Watson. He just reads that thing, and he's done it since he was like four years old. Fourth down and four possible punting situation. Standing at his own 15 is Atkins. Richardson, Watson at the Roan County 45. They've been low snaps. Snap is back. Atkins lays into it high. Spiraling punt at the 45 of Roan County. Takes a big bounce for Lincoln County inside the 35, and it will be down to the 34. I think Atkins has done a really good job punting here tonight. Yeah. He's had some time, so he's been able to uh, to get the ball off, and he's done a good job. Raiders have done a good job on a three and out in the first possession of half number two. They take over with 10 minutes and four seconds on the clock here in the third, leading 14 to six. First and 10, right to left. The Raiders will travel in the third. 
Ball spotted between the two hashes at the 34. Rome County splits Richardson near side, Cottrell far side, back split in the backfield. Hunt and Walker. It'll be Walker, off tackle. Walker breaks the tackle at the 40, fighting for extra yards out to the 42. Good first down carry for the skid steer. There you go, Drew. Keep a hold of that nickname because he trucked uh, a defender here, stiff arm, and kept his feet churning. Just a nice little quick uh, dive right off, right off the guard. Nice pull. Lane Watson got a block. And uh, nice little run for Clay Walker. Takes four times to put it in my memory. Second down and one, <laughs> quick hitter, Richardson, and a great tackle on the outside edge. Number 28, Nath Nicely, was waiting for Richardson right at the point of attack. He may have even, John, lost a half a yard. Or they're going to mark him back at the 42. Uh, huh. He made it further than that, fellas. Well, B. Rich that time. <laughs> Tried to bounce it to the outside just a smidge and, and into the grasp of 28. They're going to give him a loss of two yards on that carry. Third down and short. Big opportunity for Lincoln County's defense. Third man through. That's Watson. He's got a hustle fighting for the yardage. And, man, oh, man, the second effort. He got it, baby. Will give him the 45-yard line. He needed the 44. Just love to watch him run and Use his, his full length here, Drew, to get get that second and third effort contact. He breaks one, keeps slipping, keeps working. Just a uh, just a machine out there tonight. 840 and rolling. Third quarter, first offensive series for the Raiders. They've got it out to their own 45, leading 14 to 6. Cottrell splits to the wide side. That's the far side of the field. Richardson on a wing spot here on the near side. Scissors misdirection to Richardson to the outside. He goes, cuts it off. He's got wide open spaces, and he has got wheels. Cuts it up the middle. Breaks the tackle at the 40, down to the 30, down to the 25, and he will be dropped at the 23-yard line. I think the ball might have popped loose, and Hogan Greathouse was there. I'll have to check here on the replay. Thought Banks was going to get that angle. B. Rich plants his foot. Big pickup there, 32 on that play. Nope, he just handed the ball off to Hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> Here to pitch it to you. So a large carry for Richardson, and again, that helps Raiders cause here in the third. Eight minutes and counting. 14-6, Roan County trying to increase the lead. Back split at the 23 of Lincoln County. Panthers showing full-on blitz. They'll hand it off, off tackle. Big run again for Clay Walker. He spun at the 20-yard line and picked up five extra. He just loves the contact, Drew. He's a throwback fullback. The one that you, you know, the, the guys that you love, like Larry Zonka and, and Moose Johnson, those Mike guys. Allstott. That, Mike Allstott. Oh, Mike Allstott, come on. We'll have to switch this guy's number to 40. <laughs> How about Riggs from the Riggins. Redskins? Riggins, sorry, just to help our buddy Adam Anderson out. Second down and three. Hand off outside. That is, uh, is that Saul? I think that's think Sawyer, that's yeah. Saul, and he made everything out of that one-and-a-half-yard carry, yeah, he, John. He carried about three guys there on, on his back, continuing to fight for extra yardage. That'll bring up third down and about a yard. Looks like they've got to make the 13, and it is at the 14, so, yeah. So you bring in the extra offensive lineman, Richard Greathouse is going to come in. And it looks like Watson now will be the eye back in that heavy set if they go heavy. They will. Cottrell and Walker in front of Watson. Third down and one. Snap the give. Watson bounces it outside, looking for the end zone, fighting, carrying, dragging Panther defenders into the end zone. What a run. Yeah, that time it just was able to bounce it to the outside. You're going to look at the far side end, and that's going to be Sawyer. He's going to block down, and Lane Watson does the rest with a stiff arm, and uh, he's going to carry Banks into the end zone. So a three and out on defense and a very nice first drive on offense, 20 to 6 with 6.33 left, extra point pending. Snap is clean. The hold is down, and that one is tattooed all the way into the track 
That is a long one. Roan County strikes first in the second half, 21 to six. And we'll be back after these messages. Hi folks, here at Hardman's, we are a full service building material and hardware store. We have it all from nuts and bolts to plumbing, electrical, best look paint, lumber, drywall, furniture, appliances, flooring, and kitchen and bath. Our best look paint is a sure win to brighten up your interior walls or spruce up your exterior. We don't just sell the products, but we deliver and install many of them as well. All of our installers are trained and certified. On top of all that, we know a little something about customer service. We'll greet you with a smile and have the knowledge to help you get the job done right. Stop in and let's tackle your next project together. Hardman's, our family serving yours since 1907. Well, the great start to the second half. Defense, three and out. Matt White, the offense, a good drive. Yeah, a really nice seven-play drive, 66 yards, three minutes, 31 seconds off the clock. Lane Watson with a 14-yard touchdown run. Extra point kick was demolished, 21-6. to six. Roan County with the lead. So a very solid start for Roan County. Six minutes, 33 seconds on the third quarter clock. Cottrell set to do the kicking. Banks and Atkins back deep. We really do appreciate everyone for joining us on both YouTube and Facebook. Also on WVRC 104.7 FM if you're driving down the road. If you're outside of the service area, WVRCFM.com streaming audio. We got you covered anywhere in the world. If you're hanging out at Route 33 watching the game. Cottrell, low line driver. This one takes the bounce. Covered by Banks at the four-yard line, straight up the middle. Banks bouncing it outside. Breaks one tackle at the 30 and fights his way out to the 35. Banks, I'm telling you, very impressive as a kick returner. Yeah, he's, he's quick. He makes one cut, and he's going to try to get downfield. Cooper Greathouse and Tyson Freebird Freeland in there on the stop for the Raiders. 31 yards on the kick return. And that will allow the Panthers good field position to begin the second series here in the second half. Rome County leading 21 to 6, 6 minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the third. Receiver out to both sides. Again, Atkins the quarterback. He's got Banks right behind him. Now Banks shifts over to the right. Atkins fakes the give, going to keep it himself, looking for lead blocking, and while that was setting itself up from the backside, big old Jacob Bunner. Yep, Bunner got his big meat claws on him and took him down in the backfield. Meat claws reminds me of, like, uh, eating uh, shellfish, <laughs> eating crabs. Yep, right Makes here, just gets a hand on him. I don't know why I went there. <laughs> Listen, Lincoln County's going to take a timeout here, but their offense has totally changed, Drew, because of uh, a couple guys gonna, that are going to be missing off that offense, especially with lo losing their quarterback there in the first half. Well, John, we know the feeling. After last week in the second quarter, Shea Harper goes down not only on offense, defense, and special teams. He was an integral part. And so on the fly, Roan County had to adjust, and that's kind of what we're seeing here with Lincoln County. You move Atkins in at QB. You got to – shuffle guys around where he was. Yeah. And again, on defense, Joheem had some tackles in that first half, Matt, and so you lose him, and you got to adjust your defensive side as well. But again, Roan County saw that last week themselves. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's tough in this situation. You know, like you say, especially when your quarterback goes out. You know, it was big for us when we lost Shea in the backfield, but we had other guys that really could step in and, and fill that role uh, as needed. Tough spot whenever it's your starting quarterback. Timeout on the field was called by Lincoln County after that loss of yardage. I think uh, Coach Likens very upset with the, the execution on that play. Second down and 14 at the 31 of the Panthers. Shotgun snap back. Atkins steps up, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. That'll be a combined sack between Bunner and Walker. A flag in early. And I think they're going to get the Panthers on a false start. Yeah, good pressure here. And Atkins just not comfortable, so he steps up in the pocket. It looks like that. It's definitely going to be on a false start. Five in the backfield called. So back up. 
They're going to decline that one because there was no gain on that play. Okay. Big defensive pressure up front. Raiders feeling good right now. They'll take the extra down away, and so it'll be third down and 14 now. The ball still resting at the 30, well, now at the 32. So now they bring an extra defensive lineman in. Hogan Greathouse is now in playing some D-tackle with Bunner at a nose. Single receiver split to both sides. Double tight ends. Snap back. Atkins rolling, looking, and he has been flushed. He'll dump it outside, and that is going to be almost picked off. But Watson doesn't get it, and a penalty called here. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Coach Burdett beside himself, as are we. What a play by Watson. Jumped in front of that route, almost picked it off, and he's going to be whistled for pass interference. Oh, what? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you can watch here <laughs> on the replay. It's there was no physical contact. He went straight for the ball. Wow. Watson <laughs> a little bit uh, – Roughed up here on the play. He's going to come out. I'm not sure if when he fell. Yeah, I think I think he fell on he fell on uh, somebody. So maybe a little hit to the gut. Just he's catch, already catch his breath. He's already waving Brad off. He says, "I'm fine. Just give me a second. So a very tough, tough call on a great play by Watson. Man, I I got to say that one I disagree with, but I've disagreed in my lifetime with many of them. <laughs> First and 10 for the Panthers now out to their own 46. Quick hitter off tackle. That's Spinagle loose down the field. He goes, breaks a tackle at the own 40 down to the 35 and tackled at the 32-yard line. Spinagle, a very hard and good run, and that will pick up large yardage on yeah. that first down carry. Colton Starcher, the freshman, comes in to play some linebacker there, Drew, and he's the one that ends up wrapping up uh, the, the runner. So a touchdown saving tackle by the freshman out of sorts on the defense because of the the injury to Lane. And the Raiders burn a timeout now to try to adjust, make sure they're on the same wavelength. 521 mark of the third, 21-6. Rome County leading. We'll be back after this message. Hi folks, here at Hardman's, we are a full service building material and hardware store. We have it all from nuts and bolts to plumbing, electrical, best look paint, lumber, drywall, furniture, appliances, flooring, and kitchen and bath. Our best look paint is a sure win to brighten up your interior walls or spruce up your exterior. We don't just sell the products, but we deliver and install many of them as well. All of our installers are trained and certified. On top of all that, we know a little something about customer service. We'll greet you with a smile and have the knowledge to help you get the job done right. Stop in and let's tackle your next project together. Hardman's, our family serving yours since 1907. First down and 10 down at the 32 now of Roan County after the big run by Spinagle. Got word that Banks is on the track team and I, that makes sense now. <laughs> Very fast runner. Hand off two banks to the outside. And he will be dropped after a nice first down gain of about four yards. Not sure what that person was talking about. I'm pretty sure I've used these uh, players' names the whole game. Just say Adkins and you'll be, yeah. you'll be about 99% <laughs> are, right. There are plenty of Adkinses here. Name well known in Lincoln County. <laughs> Give him four down to the Roan County 28. 450. Five and counting, Roan County leading 21 to six, but getting all they want here from this very motivated Lincoln County team. Down their starting quarterback with Atkins in now. Backs in the eye. Double wing set to the near side. Here's the snap, quick hitter. Spinagle to the outside, leans into a run. Watson back in. Spinagle picks up a couple more. It'll be third down and about four. Looks like Andy Jetton that time was in there to sweep the leg, Johnny and make the stop. Who, who is that running the ball? Uh, that was Spinagle. Spinagle, John. number nine. Number nine. I'm surprised I haven't missed eight and nine yet tonight. I know. But the pink gloves. Third down and four. Down just shy of the third, 25 of Roan County to the 26. Lincoln County mounting a charge here. I formation again. Give. This time Banks cuts it back into the teeth of the defense. And he'll find pressure. And that's big Jacob Bunner again blowing things up. In the second half, as he did in that first ball game against Shady. Yes, Bunner, once you get him in his, in, in your, in his grips, it's hard to break free from that big guy. 
Clock continuing to run here late into the third quarter. 340 and counting, 21-6 Roan County. And the Raiders with a fourth down and four defensively. The yard to reach is the Raider 22. Panthers will spread it out. Receiver to both sides. Wing to the near side. Single back under center. Atkins fakes the handoff. He's going to look to throw. He's got pressure. He is locked up, and he is going to be gang sacked by a bunch of Raiders. John Who was first. Yeah, you have Bunner in there as well as Hogan Greathouse coming out of the pile. But you probably have Jet in there also as we go back to the replay to help me get my stats right. And it's just a big push from Bunner. Andy Jetton kind of in there. I think it's going to go to Bunner and Hogan Greathouse. Well, a great stop by the Raiders on fourth down, a turnover on downs. Raiders will begin possession at their own 21 yard line. 314. 26 yard left line. Left here in the third. 26, my bad. Looked over at Kenny G and got lost. Eye formation for the Raiders. Quick hitter to the outside. Richardson almost tripped up at the line of scrimmage. He will get back to the line and no more. I'm really, John, impressed yes. with the interior and those blitzing linebackers for the Panthers. I was going to say the same thing. The edge we have not been able to get tonight. B. Rich has not had a big run on the outside. As um, We've had a lot of success with some of those underneath counter. Yeah. You know, where you get a little misdirection and get those guys over pursuing a little bit is where Roan County's really – uh, had some big runs. One good thing I noticed, David Stevens, who was injured in the first half in the ball game, so that's good to see for the Panthers. Back split in the backfield. First down, or second down and 10, and there is Clay Walker breaking free, and this is coming back. Uh, Walker all the way across midfield, and it's going to be all for naught. The Raiders' penalty woes continue in the first two ball games. Yeah, just uh, when the ball is past you, you, you got to – let your defender go. So that's going to come back big time. Got a couple guys on Lincoln County's team. Look like they're cramping a little bit. But tough break. Clay Walker is running so hard here tonight. Um, I do like, John, if if the leads are not working to the edge, dives. go the quick hitter and try yeah. to keep the Panthers a little slow and off guard. But I, I believe that uh, the great Matthew Schaefer always told us 31's better, Coach. <laughs> yes, he did. So that will back up the run, take away the first down, take away the big gain, and Roan County now will be sitting deeper in their own end zone area. It will be second down, and about 18 yards, the ball is going to be spotted at about the 17 of Roan County. Actually, they'll get it out to the 18 of the Raiders. Looks like Lincoln brings in a big fella. I don't have the weight or the height here, but Whoa. he's a sophomore, Blake Lucas. That is a big boy. Raiders spread it out. Twins to both sides. Shotgun for Greathouse. Snap back looking near side. There's that slip screen. That's Watson, and that was diagnosed very well. That's going to lose three yards. You know, not only am I impressed with their backs, but they tackle well. They tackle really well as uh, Dunlap's going to make another tackle there for his fourth. So the Raiders pushed even further back into their own Side of the field, it'll be third down. And now the Raiders must get 21 yards. The first down line is at the 36. Lincoln County providing a big pushback here on defense. 140 and rolling, 21 to six Raiders leading. Great house out of the shotgun, the snap, the give. Here's a reverse, Richardson. Got to get outside, buddy. He's going, he's going to head that way. Out to the 20, big block at the 20-yard line. Richardson gets to the 30, still working up the field. He'll get all the way to the 34, or they'll knock him out at the 33. 32, it looks like, maybe. Unfortunately, on third down and 21, the Raiders will not pick up the first down. Big block <laughs> yeah. out front. Lane Watson with a nice block. Jacob Greathouse also downfield trying to help his his uh, his running back out. It's going to be fourth down. Clay Walker pitched that thing at the perfect time, Drew, and uh, one of those wrinkles that Coach Burdett likes. Credit to Lincoln County's defensive backs over on the far side. Two of them did not bite. Hunting for Roan County, a low snap. Picked up nicely, though. This one high into the sky. Taken by Banks. Dropped by Banks. It's on the ground. It's on the ground. It's picked up. It is 
Sawyer Hunt. Sawyer Hunt to the five into the end zone. Oh, you cannot advance uh, the punt. I think that's what it is, a muffed punt. Oh, man, I tell you, if I knew the rules better, it'd be great. <laughs> Almost Banks, in the lane's hands. Banks dropped it. Lane dove after it. He didn't grab it, and it was picked up by Sawyer Hunt. For a second, my eyes saw 31. I was like, that cannot be right. <laughs> and so Sawyer scooped it, tried to score, but it will stop right there, deadened at the 38-yard line. Still, John, you saw Roan County give it up in the first half. You were wondering if you were going to get that from Lincoln County, if you could cause something. Yeah. And that ball was squirrely coming off the foot of Cottrell. Banks came up to field it. And it just got through the wickets. Yeah, he, he, he kind of, he went in a little too far and it came off to the side. But great, great opportunity for the Raiders here. 107 remaining in the third, 21-6. Rome County, new life offensively at the Panther 38. They move right to left for the final 107 of the quarter. Heavy is the look. Under center goes the sophomore, Jacob Greathouse. Fumbles the snap. Jumps on it. That's the second Center QB exchange that was mishandled. Getting a little late. Ball gets a little slick. No gain, but again, Jacob doing the smart thing, getting on it quickly. Second and 10 from the 38 once again. Raiders break the huddle. He'll send Sawyer Hunt to the far side. Eye formation with a wing near side. Hand off. That is Walker. Had a lead Walker, a lead blocker coming over, but again the bigs inside for the Panthers. Just meaty. <laughs> yeah. And blocking all the traffic there. Yeah, they've got some size across the front. And Blake Lucas, Josiah Stratton, both those guys in there and I think that will be the final play. Rome County will not run another. It'll be third and 10. Raiders leading 21 to six as we enter the fourth and final quarter here in the home opener for Rome County of 2023. You're watching and listening to Rome County Raider football on WVRC. There is nothing quite like mowing season in the Mountain State. And if you love keeping your property looking pristine, stop in at Hilder Supply on Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer, West Virginia. We supply everything you need to make your yard look its best. Husqvarna riding mowers are in stock, including model number TS242XD for $36.99 and model TS142L for only $25.99. We also have plenty of Husqvarna 455 Rancher chainsaws on sale for 15% off while supplies last. Hilder Supply also has an in-house mechanic for all of your Husqvarna and Shindawa equipment needs. Need a tune-up? We have your man. Visit us on the web at hildresupply.com, check out our Facebook page at Hildreth Oilfield Supply, or stop by and see us at the store located on Route 33 in Spencer. Hildreth Supply, a hometown store with hometown ownership and proud supporter of all Roan County athletes. We welcome you back to County Stadium as we enter the fourth period. Roan County, a big third and ten from there, or from the Lincoln County 38. Leading 21 to six, looking for two in a row to start the season. It hasn't been easy. What has been easy is how you can get us on the radio, 104.7, WVRCFM.com, streaming audio. You can see us on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok. We got you covered. Third and 10, Raiders spread it out. Great house, pump fakes. He's going to send it deep down the field. He's got Richardson behind the defense, and he will connect. Touchdown, Rome County. It was a perfect strike from the sophomore great house. Richardson with the chair move, and it's a score. Yeah, the pump fake froze everybody. You watch the defensive end, 57 on his edge. He's like, what, what, what's going on? Okay, great house puts it on the money right here, Drew. Defender had no chance. Back turned. B. Rich once again into the end zone. Talking with Coach Burdett in the first of the season, before the first game, he said, Great House is throwing a great deep ball already in practice and in the preseason. He'll hold for Cottrell. The snap, the hold, the kick, hammered. And I mean deep. That one near the construction zone in Roan County. After the turnover defensively, they get the score on a third down and 10, and they lead it 28 to 6 with 11.52 left in the ballgame. 
Hi, this is Lisa Simmons inviting you to shop local and come see me at our fully stocked warehouse, Honest Fred's Flooring. We're located at 373 East Main Street, Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. At Honest Fred's, you'll find the latest trends in floor covering. Carpet, vinyl, tile, hardwood, and the very popular luxury vinyl flooring. We install everything we sell with the best customer service in town. Financing available, so call me today at 304-927-8082 or check us out on the web. Take a small drive to Big Savings. Honestfreds.com A big strike play from Rome County sophomore quarterback Jacob Greathouse to the senior Brandon Richardson. Uh, yeah, three plays, 38 yards, a minute 15 off the clock. Jacob Greathouse to be rich, 38 yards for the touchdown. Extra point was good, 28 to six. Rome County with the lead. Uh, I was just, what well, caught me off guard here, I was looking at the scores. Huntington, <laughs> H- Huntington and South Charleston, 86 to nothing. At the half. At the half. Huntington Yikes. defeating South Charleston. Somebody was asking on the feed uh, if you could give us the Nitro St. Albans score, if you can check that one. Coven Cottrell. Set to do the kicking left to right. It will sail here in the final stanza. They don't have a score up for that one. Leg in, angle kick taken by Banks again. He is absolutely dangerous. Straight up the gut he goes. Bouncing it to the outside. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles. And finally, somebody on the kick coverage team brings him down. Saw Chad Blosser get up off the pile. Also Colton Starcher. And Banks is cramping up here now. Yeah, that was, again, we see that stuff the first few games of the season in West Virginia. No matter how much teams, programs, athletes try to get themselves hydrated for a season, it's always very humid in West Virginia the first few games of the season, and it just comes on you so fast. And luckily, Banks able to get off the field quickly. They're just going to try to get that young man stretched out. And he has been... Uh, one of the more impressive uh, players I've seen here tonight. Yeah, yeah. He runs with a purpose. He runs hard. And his kick returning, he doesn't waste any effort uh, east and west. He's going north and south. Yeah, one of the great things here tonight, Drew, is Shea Harper on the sideline. He has been all smiles. He's been down there pumping his teammates up. He is a, such a leader. So he's missed on the field, but he's, he's still here helping his team out. Making an impact. So you lose Banks for a play at least. They're going to spread it out. They weren't set, though. Ack is going to dump it over the middle, and that may oh. be picked off just over the head of Sawyer Hunt. Flag he down. had the best chance at it. I think the sideline official finally realized yeah. that Nobody they was were set. not set. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody was set. Atkins trying to hustle that first play up. Or not, they'll get a, t- a different type of penalty. That's fine. That's worse. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Winfield up 28 to 21 or to 28 22 on Hoover. Some very big game there. Quarter. Yeah. Sure, our good buddy Jamie Roffles there watching that one. Yep. Huge Hugging. fan of the Huskies. We appreciate everyone watching here. Thank you all so much on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok. And the old fashioned way if you're watching, driving in your vehicle, and you're listening to the station. Or if you're driving in your vehicle and you're listening to us on WVRCFM.com with streaming audio. Five yards on the penalty. First and 15 from the 29. Atkins grabbing at any yardage he can get. And that was a good tough run for a yard. Yeah, Bunner shows up like large Marge, takes care of business. Clock begins to run here in this fourth and final quarter, 11-20, and rolling Raiders leading 28-6. to six. Bunner right now, four tackles in the defensive interior and helped out with three sacks tonight. Under center goes Atkins, backs in the eye. Snap, give to the first man. That's the fullback. Is that Spinagle? It normally is. Another jet, yep. Tyson yep. Freeland. Spinagle. Spinagle, no gain on the play. Brings up third down and 13. The yard to reach is the Panther, 44. Ball resting at the 31. Clock continuing to churn here, 10 and a half. And now the clock will stop with a timeout on the field for Lincoln County. 28-6 your score and a big third down for the defense after these messages. 
Hi, this is Lisa Simmons inviting you to shop local and come see me at our fully stocked warehouse, Honest Fred's Flooring. We're located at 373 East Main Street, Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. At Honest Fred, you'll find the latest trends in floor covering. Carpet, vinyl, tile, hardwood, and the very popular luxury vinyl flooring. We install everything we sell with the best customer service in town. Financing available, so call me today at 304-927-8082 or check us out on the web. Take a small drive to Big Savings. Honestfriends.com Well, this game shades of last week in the second half. It looks like Roan County's corrected a lot of these issues, playing much better, diagnosing things much better, and making big plays when they need to. Yeah, you've seen some big plays happen here now in the second half, especially with the arm of Jacob Greathouse just airing the ball out. Roan County's doing a great job of, uh, of calling those plays when we need to. And, and I like what I'm seeing here right now, a five-man front. And, and some other guys getting an opportunity to get in there and play. Tyson Freeland's in there right now. Hogan Greathouse was in earlier. Shotgun for Atkins, double wing formation. They'll send a man across in motion. Now they'll get him set. Hand off Spinagle, here's a reverse. Taken on the outside by Zachariah Miller and Roan County able to handle it. Brody Proctor, the freshman, staying home and doing his job. Yes, he did a great job there. But I think Miller made a business decision because he saw P. Rich coming downhill. And a uh, little trick play there. Gain of three by Miller on the reverse, and that will be back to the original line of scrimmage. But that's going to bring up a fourth down and ten. With ten minutes left in the game, Roan County leading 28-6. to six. And at this point, it looks like they're going to sell out. Twins to both sides. Atkins out of the shotgun. Flank to his right. They'll send Spinagle across to the far side. Snap back, rolling out to the wide side. They'll dump it. Spinagle <laughs> cut in front. Lane Watson, the pick, the six. It's good. That thing was diagnosed by Lane Watson before the ball even left his hand. Watch the break here from Lane. Let it go, let it go, bam, break, and he is down the sideline. Lane Watson, the big dog here tonight, doing everything. Watson, as you mentioned, perfect diagnosis and got in front of it. Now, remember the last time he cut in front, he got called for a pass interference, and he was just waiting <laughs> for another opportunity. Cottrell set to do the extra point kicking. Snap is back, tough snap for Great house. He got it on the tee late, though, but that snap a little bit high. A little high. Cottrell has it blocked. 9.38 left, though. Roan County adds a score. They lead it 34 to 6. Intelligent Network Securities is a hub zone, service disabled, veteran owned small business located in central West Virginia. INS provides full scope, enterprise level digital security and forensic services. We specialize in state and nation level cybersecurity intelligence, but we feel compelled as a company to offer our commercial consumers both proactive and reactive defense strategies as well. With 15 plus years experience in the field, providing support to commercial as well as nation and state level entities, INS can provide insight to protecting your assets assets with our use and knowledge of bleeding edge technologies. Check us out on the web at intelligent-network-security.com or call us at 304-566-9111. Brian Cottrell, President. Well, we haven't seen one for a while. I can remember back to last year with Matthew Schaefer in the home opener against St. Mary's, a tip drill to himself for the pick six. Matt White, we got another. Yep. Lane Watson, beautiful play, 35-yard pick six, takes it to the house. That kick was blocked uh, after the uh, muffled snap a little bit. That was nicely from uh, Lincoln County. Got in and got that block kick. Roan County extending the lead out 34 to 6 now. 9.38 to go here in the fourth. Cottrell will kick it off. And we got a couple new ones back there. John, is that number seven, Austin Dunlap? Looks like seven and possibly 12. Yep, or Jack Tidd maybe? 32. 32, okay. 32 is Ben Donahue. I do have a roster, trust me. Dunlap. Dunlap, the return man. Makes it all the way out to the 25. And, oh, man, we got a, another Panther down here. Yep, 
Well, Injury is part of the ball game here in football, but we've seen some Panthers go down here in this one. Most of them have been able to return. Unfortunately, Joheem, the quarterback, lost in the second quarter. Atkins has been taking the snap since. And this time the injured player, number 29, Zach Turley, a sophomore. He's up and walking it off. Yeah, it's always good to see when the get, kids can get up and get off the field on their own power. Yeah. Possession will begin at the Panther 25, right between the hashes. 9.31 left in the game, Roan County leading 34 to 6. Whoever was wondering about that Nitro score, uh, they're up big on St. Albans, 77 to nothing in the third quarter. Well, Nitro put up 59 last week against Roan County future opponent Polka. They got a quarterback who's launching it all over the place. Yeah, we've seen that guy a couple times when he was at Buffalo. Yep. Didn't First do down and 10, the carry, Spinagle again. He's running hard. He breaks tackles out to the 40-yard line, carrying his defender out there. That was Clay Walker, who went for a bit of a ride on the back of Spinagle. Yeah, that was a uh, tough run. You can see Spinagle takes on Proctor. Pick up of about 17 on that play. Mm. Out to the 42 of the Panthers on the near hash. They're moving right to left here in the final quarter. Receiver split to the far side. That's Jordan Gregory, the junior. Backs into the eye. Well, that's kind of like a heavy package. Here's the pitch. And that's Banks back in the game, so that's good to see he's okay. Just a little cramp earlier. And he'll churn up the ground for another six-yard carry. Got to get a hand on him quickly, John, because he is able to get free. He has got the wheels. I don't know if Huntington and South Charleston's a big rivalry, but they've moved it to six-minute clocks or in the third and fourth quarter. Wow, running clock. Second and four, just shy of midfield at the 48. High formation with a single wing right to the side. This one handed off against Penagle, running with a purpose. He'll pick up the first down and four more. We'll give him three more on the play. Seven-yard carry into Roan County territory at the 45. Like to see this. You're down 34-6, final quarter, and Spinagle running like a man possessed. Yeah, they're still fighting in the game. And as we said, we've this played team them will, yeah. ten times, you know, and uh, they don't give up very easily. Andy Jetton's going to check out. And Leland Schaefer is going to get his opportunity here as a D-end. Schaefer, D-end, rings a bell, pick six, possibly. Under eight in the ball game, 34-6. Quick hitter to the tackle. Or off tackle, sorry, not to the tackle. That'd be a big young man who was carrying the ball. <laughs> big Boy. old number 77 out there, Josiah Stratton. I'd like to see him carry ball once. Clay Spinoggle. Walker that time with the stop as well as Noah Meatball Jet. Holding Spinagle to two on the first down carry. Second and eight as the clock continues to roll. That's a good thing for Roan County. Under seven and a half minutes left in this one. 34 to six. And this looks, this is kind of like Lincoln County's version of heavy. They've got the two in the eye, and then they've got the lead blocker to the outside. Here's Atkins keeping it himself into the secondary, and he punished Ooh. the Roan County defender out there. That was he Sawyer was Hunt. Salt. He got a little bit of a stinger, it looks like. Yeah, Hunt is trying to shake this off, but I think they may have to get somebody in for him. Yeah, Hunt's going to check out the freshman Colt, Colton Starcher in. That was a nasty hit on a first down carry for Atkins. Yeah. Chains move to the 33 of Roan County. Seven minutes and rolling. Raiders, a 34-6 lead. Now they'll move it out a little bit. A couple tight ends, a wing to the near side. Receiver to both sides. Atkins fakes again. He's got pressure quickly, and he'll dump it. And Tyson, Freebird, Freeland with the West Virginia waterfall. Woo. Coming out of the back of the helmet. He is a nasty looking dude coming right at your grill and Atkins made the business decision. Yeah, big guy that decided to come out for wrestling last year. I, I'm a believer in in uh, the bigger guys coming out wrestling. It's gonna help your, your balance, your footwork and the defensive front. 
or the offensive line. And uh, Freebird has, has shown up here a little bit in these first couple games. Second down and 10 from the Roan 33. Clock stopped at 6.57. Raiders leading 34-6 at the moment. Back to the I formation with the wing. Quick hitter, that's Spinagle and Roan County able to corral him quickly, but look at Spinagle continue to force his way through those big front line defenders from the Raiders, and he picked up two with Bunner on him. Yeah, Bunner. Never, never see Bunner really give up much here, and he's got a hold of him. I think, uh, I think Leland Schaefer as well helping out. Good to see Sawyer Hunt come back in. He's a, okay to be third down and eight at the 31 of Roan County. 6.20 and rolling in the fourth. Shake that stinger off, Saul. Miller split to the near side, single back. Now Miller will go across in motion. Atkins lets him roll through. Five-step drop. Screen pass out to the outside. That's caught by Banks, and then <laughs> he is folded like a lawn chair by Lane Watson. What a hit. Listen, guys, there's not many fellows with this size and this kind of athleticism, but Lane has always been a gamer. He reads it and just says, uh-uh, I'm going to put my shoulder right through your numbers. What a play. False start penalty declined. It'll be fourth down. On the loss of four, it'll be fourth down and 11. No, they'll back it up to the 35. Fourth and 12 from the Roan County, 35. The yard to reach is the 23. And the clock should be rolling here pretty soon. Why is the clock not running? That was a catch, correct? Yeah. Why is the clock not running? Man, that White has had some problems here tonight. Feel bad for him. Fourth down and 12. Raider defense. See if they can stand strong. Twin receivers far side. One to the near side. Atkins in the shotgun. Banks right behind him. The snap. Five-step drop. Atkins looking over the middle. Nowhere to go. Flushed out. Launches it down the field. And great battle between the defender and the receiver there. A tremendous play by Jacob Greathouse. He was right there with Miller, who also made a big move on it as well. That yeah. was a fun battle. Step for step, the double move. Greathouse keeps his eye on him and does what he's supposed to do. You get to give it to Miller. He tried to undercut that thing. Rome County's going to get the ball back, and it looks like we're going to see the Jevs. A timeout whistled, called for Coach Burdett and Rome County as a signal to Coach Likens that we're – Bringing in the subs and the Raiders with 5.58 left in the ball game. 34 to 6. Break to take. We'll be right back. You've been enduring some of the hottest days of summer. Now it's time to enjoy the hottest deals of summer during the summer sales event at Jack Garrett Ford. Two new Broncos in stock, plus sizzling savings on used. Like a 19 Ford Echo Sport, now 19.9. Whoa, a 17 Kia Sportage, now 17.9. Local trade 2010 RAV4, 12.9. These and more while they last during summer sales savings. Jack Garrett Ford, Ripley Road, Spencer. A timeout for Rome County here, signaling the subs are coming in for the Raiders. At 5.58 left in the game, Raiders leading 34 to 6. And the Panthers will respond in kind. Now, again, you look at the sideline, uh, they're getting a lot of fresh jerseys in there. They've got a few jerseys in there that they've got to keep in. But they've got a lot of fresh ones. So we're going to see the second unit, guys. And for Roan County, it'll be freshman Brody Proctor running the offense. And the Raiders will stick with the heavy set. And I'm not missing Garrett, uh, not Garrett, I almost called him the wrong name. I got a burn side in my head. Uh, Garrett Brabham, and it's a B too, so that didn't help. Garrett Brabham in as the H back. Colton Starcher in front, Leland Schaefer in front. That's the heavy look for this JV unit. Yep. The first handoff will go to Brabham. Nice stop up front. That's Spinagle who is still in. And that will send the Raiders back a couple of yards. But that will start the clock. And that is number one right now for Rome County. Yeah, and that's what you do in situations like this. You're going to run the ball, keep it simple, work the clock. 
and uh, get out of here hopefully with everybody feeling good about themselves. And you see immediately after that, you see Atkins going out, a couple other guys going out. That's how Coach Likens is getting these other guys in. You want to make sure you don't go full sale substitutions because you'll have 15 guys on the field. Just a couple of starters left in for Lincoln County, Roan County, wholesale already. Second down and 12 at the Roan County 33. Heavy package. This will be the quick hitter. Second man through. That's Colton Starcher. He'll fight back to the first down. Give a shout out to Colton's grandpa, Stu Starcher. He came in and seen me today and got a cut. Said he was going to watch the game. So a little chance for you to see Colton get in on the action. Well, he's the only one getting a haircut, Colton. Yeah. Listen, we, we, we clean the sides up of Colton. We don't touch the back, baby. That thing's been. I can't believe been. you made me put that in your ad. The West Virginia waterfall. That's right, the mullet. What else, Kids would, these days. what else would you say? Kids these days. <laughs> I, I almost hit it with the uh, – I wanted you to do the Ric Flair woo, <laughs> but uh, that didn't happen. If you'd have said it, I would have done it. <laughs> 420 and rolling, 34-6, Roan County, third and 10 for the JV unit at their own 35. Hand off, Brabham bounces it outside. Brabham at the 40 to the 45, showing his strength, and he's just shy of the first down, about three inches to go. Unless they mark it forward there, they may. Well, let's see where they're looking here. I think the nose of the ball needs to be just barely over. And it's going to be just barely shy. So I'll give it a six-inch first down opportunity here. On fourth down and in inches, the clock rolling now nearing the three or the four-minute mark. Big fourth down opportunity for the Raiders. Lincoln County showing everyone in the box. We all know what's happening here, and that's Proctor. He'll get the first down carry. Proctor shot through very quickly, picks up not just the first down, but two yards. Keep that clock rolling. As we say, roll that beautiful bean clock footage. Come on. Come on. Roll the clock. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just watching the clock. Come on, Boots. You're better than that, Boots. Don't pay attention to that white hat. Just do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he don't know what he's doing. I mean, just, just kidding. Just kidding. 350 and counting here in the final quarter. Rome County leading 34-6. to six. JV unit in, earning a first down off the big carry by Garrett Brabham. You look at Brabham, he reminds me of a couple of running backs. As he cuts it back, picks up a yard, he reminds me with his size – very much of Luke Scott. Yeah. Uh, very much of the Eric Jarvis yeah. uh, workman kind of look to him. I see a lot of that out of him. What are all those ties? What They all wrestled. Too. Yes. They all wrestled and as well. if we're looking to last year, he, he reminds me a bit of Begler. Yeah. Just in the size and the way he is set up. He's very strong, very stout for a uh, shorter young man. And he is just scratching the surface, I think, of his capabilities yeah. as a running back. Just a sophomore. Second down and nine, clock down under three now. Handoff, off tackle, Colton Starcher. That's a 10-yard carry from the fullback. The quick hitters continue to work. Yeah, just up the gut, Colton Starcher does a great job of just moving his feet and continuing to move the pile as well. I gotta back him up to the 45. That come was, on. come on. Ava Bratton checking in. Wonderful, wonderful to see that young lady continue to play football at Roan County High School. Richard Greathouse checks in. Younger brother Wyatt comes in, and Richard is not happy about giving sharing time with his brother. That's about the only time Richard does not smile. He is a good, <laughs> happy kid. So the Raiders with a third down and one. Two minutes and ten seconds left. And I'll shuffle Wyatt over in the line. Handoff, Starcher. He wanted the first down to begin with. Got it. He has more. Spins at the 40. Nice. Down to the 35. Colton Starcher. Colton Starcher may be one of the leading rushers here tonight after these big runs. <laughs> it's been tough going here tonight. It's been very good defense throughout. Nice. And that front line for Lincoln County. Roan County finally making some things happen. Yeah, nice little a, spin move on the run as well. If he gets about 12 more, he'll be right there with Clay and Lane. B. Rich, though, he's got 57 on the day. 
Minute 40 and rolling 34 to 6. Now I have a Burnside in. Nick Burnside coming in. We've got Starcher in the backfield. Bradley Mace now in the backfield as a lead blocker. See if they give Bradley a carry here. No, that's going to be Proctor going the wrong way, coming back to the other side and picking up positive yardage and then tackled by Bradham. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody went one way, and Proctor <laughs> took off towards Lincoln County's sideline. Realized very quickly that was the wrong direction. Yep. He said, whoa, 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 wait one minute. He's an athletic kid. That's why he can do stuff like that. One minute remaining, and Rome County will improve to 2-0 and here on this early season. They got everything they wanted, though, yep. on this Lincoln County team. Yep. Lincoln County came here to play, and some injuries kind of hurt Lincoln, what they were looking to do. Proctor under center. We'll see if he will take an E or hand it off one mile final time. That'll be Colton Starcher. He'll pick up about three or four yards. And the Raiders will not have to run another play. And we'll see if they do run one more. Maybe, maybe not. Well, they brought a couple extra subs in. To I want to get these subs one play if they can. The Manimal's in. Not sure. 14 seconds left. They may not get it done. They're shuffling some players in and out. Seven seconds left. Nope. They are going to run a play, but it's going to be that. Well, nope, they're not nope. even going to get it off. So they were looking for the victory formation. They don't get it off, but JV does its job, runs the clock out, and the Raiders a hard-fought victory, 34-6 to over a game at Lincoln County. Panther team. Raiders improved to 2-0 and on the season. We'll take a break for our sponsors. We'll come back. We'll recap the ball game, give you your statistics, and have your Willard C. Starcher Auto Parts player of the game. After these messages, you're watching and listening to Raider football on WVRC. You've been enduring some of the hottest days of summer. Now it's time to enjoy the hottest deals of summer during the summer sales event at Jack Garrett Ford. Two new Broncos in stock, plus sizzling savings on used. Like a 19 Ford Echo Sport, now 19.9. Whoa, a 17 Kia Sportage, now 17.9. Local trade buddy 10 Rav Ford, 12.9. These and more while they last during summer sales savings. Jack Garrett Ford, Ripley Road Special. Answer. When you find yourself faced with a legal issue, the steps you take next can literally impact the rest of your life. Hiring the right attorney is one of the most important decisions you'll make. At Joel Baker Law Office, we understand the importance of providing prompt, competent, and honest legal representation. Call or text our office today to schedule a consultation. 304-500-9238. In the 2024 circuit judge election, what are you looking for in a candidate? I want someone who has experience in the room. We need someone who's hardworking. It's important to me to have someone who is fair and treats everyone the same. Who are you voting for in the 2024 circuit judge race? Josh Downey. I'm voting for Josh Downey. I'm voting for Josh Downey. Paid for by the committee to elect Josh Downey, Aaron M. Nichols Treasurer. Hey, are you serious? I like a good laugh. I beg you do too. Which is why I say, if all those insurance companies want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads, go right ahead. As long as it's not my money that's paying for it. Here's how you get seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance. Go to Erie Insurance. With Erie, a great price is just the start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products like Erie Rate Lock. You hear that? Rate Lock. Name says it all. For car insurance, it can't be beat. But hey, don't just take it from me. See for yourself why more than 90% of Erie customers stay with them year after year after year. Seriously. Your Erie Insurance Agent in Spencer is the Kirby Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 927-2544. That's 927-2544. Or visit kirbyinsurance.com. We welcome you back to County Stadium. Victorious Roan County in their home opener here in uh, 2023. 
It didn't look good at the beginning, but it got better as the game went on the second half, just as last week. The second half was much improved. The same thing this week for this Roan County team. They win it over a game Lincoln